What is going on, everybody? It is episode 214 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett. I am here with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. We have a special show for you today. Two guests in the house. Two. Two. Would you like to introduce the first? Our main guest host? Yes, main guest. Perhaps? Perhaps. Shane Cashman. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. That just means that we have a special That's surprise like guest. That. Wow, that was like Uno reverse right there. I like, yeah. that. I like uh, that. Introduce yourself, sir. I am Shane Cashman. It's good to be here with all you guys. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. And I write Tales from the Inverted World. And our season finale is going to be this Sunday at TimCast.com. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Very cool. Yeah. That's, and, then, uh, and then immediately getting to work on the podcast after that? And then we start our weekly live show. Yeah, sometime next month. Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, next month is soon. Excellent. So very dude. soon. Excellent. Yeah. And also with us today, would you introduce yourself, sir? Hi, everybody. Uh, Andrew from Don't Walk Run Productions, a uh, very not pop culture uh, yeah. uh, kind of channel. But, you know, I, I, I dabble, you know. I knew you were going to say that for some reason. Wow. I knew you were going to say that you dabble. You watch my channel. Yeah, I must. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, like, and I'm glad I'm not the main guest because that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, no, no you're I feel our like special surprise guest. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. That's, that's it's kind of like it's kind of like in movies, like uh, in movies and television shows, like who gets main credit is important, <laughs> but also who gets last credit is important. If they put ah. if they put with if they put the word with in the name, mm -hmm. meaning that that person is like usually they would have been the star 20 years ago, but they're now the they're now like James Reborn was known for always having with James Reborn in the casting with it because he was a, a big name actor, but he was no longer the lead. Man, hmm. so that's you. That's special guest today. Trust, wow. and also the money will be raining on you. Yes, I feel safe for the first time in a while. Yeah, you're, you're kind of off to the side. Yeah, watch your eyes. Yeah, I'm like I'm dodging it usually. I was well, actually thinking about this because uh, I was watching. I've been rewatching Boston Legal recently. Okay, uh, and there's uh, early on you get some early scenes of uh, like Kerry Washington from Scandal, mm -hmm. and they list her as special guest, and I couldn't figure out what the hell made her special guest because Scandal wasn't around yet. So mm. apparently she was already like a fairly well-known actress or likely doing something with ABC at the time because a lot of times if it's like the same actor from the same that, that's working on a production at the same studio, right. they will kind of because they kind of like, oh, I'm done with work for the day. I'll come over and help you guys on that show. So that's you today. You are the I'm Carrie the, Washington. You are the nice. Carrie Washington of this of this show. <laughs> uh, that, uh, does that make me Shonda Rhimes? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No. I, I don't want to be Shonda Rhimes. I don't want to be Shonda Rhimes. I've seen what happened to Grey's Anatomy. Uh, so. <laughs> So we have a bunch of stuff to talk about today. We are going to talk about Caleb McLaughlin and um, what I believe is one of the strangest statements, blatant statements of like, you can't prove him stranger. otherwise. A stranger. A stranger statement. A stranger thing. Yes, it's there. very strange uh, and depressing. I'm annoying myself today. <laughs> but uh, it's, like, that's a, it's one of the jokes that then you say, please don't block me. Please so, don't block me, yes. Brett. So we've got that. We've got uh, some uh, actual data, evidence that proves that the all the drama around Don't Worry Darling has kind of helped it with its impressive but still mediocre box office run. It did better than they thought it would do. Boo. So Yeah, I know, right? So we're going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about uh, the, the dangers of memeing whilst uh, being a celebrity uh, in an era of memes. Uh, Celebrities so. can't meme, and they also can't take a joke, but we, we have multiple multiple perspectives on this because um, Chloe Moretz maybe didn't deserve what happened to her. I don't think she did. I don't, uh, <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, I, I tend to agree, but yeah. I, I got some perspectives on that. So we got <laughs> that. We got Podluck. We got a bunch of other stuff. You guys are ready? We'll just get right into it. Mary, are we ready? We are ready. Are we ready? Ready. Are we ready? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Okay. So it says... Uh, Caleb McLaughlin speaks out about the racism in the Stranger Things fandom. He says it took a toll on me, which I thought was, you know, there's, there must be some really crazy claims here, like something really bad must have happened. But this is what it says. It says, Caleb McLaughlin faced some covert and overt racism as he rose to stardom while portraying uh, Lucas Sinclair in Stranger Things. The star made an appearance at the Heroes Comic-Con convention in Belgium over the weekend and talked about some of the experiences he had as a black actor on the beloved Netflix show. This is the quote. He says, It definitely took a toll on me as a younger kid, the actor said in a video captured by an attendee. My very first Comic-Con, some people didn't stand in my line because I was black. Some people told me, oh, I didn't want to be in your line because you were mean to 11. Those are two very, very different things. 
That, you, know that? you know what that sounds like is at the beginning of the show, they had a younger audience than they have now because the audience has grown up with it. Yeah. And that sounds like a statement that was probably made by someone like 10 years old or younger who May- thinks I mean, that maybe? the show is real life, thinks that the cast members are who their characters are. And he wasn't the most well-liked character on the show. It was actually his younger sister in the show that was more well liked than him, and that's why they've given her more and more lines as the show went on. And he was known to be the neurotic, paranoid friend who but he was never the was leading like star. suspicious yeah. of. Well, sure, yeah, he wasn't the leading star, he but it's also killer. supposed to be an ensemble cast, right? Um, but he was more suspicious of Eleven at, yeah. at the beginning of the show, and whatever, whatever. But like he. You know, you just have to accept that, like, some people can't separate your character from who yeah. you are in real life. And beyond that, I, I kind of fall on the line of, like, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And just Okay, saying, but what was he supposed to do? Wear a wire? No, what I'm saying is that he's saying they said that they, they didn't uh, come into my line because I was black. And then he just makes a separate point that has nothing to do with it. He doesn't say, one person said this to me. Another right. person said this to me. He just makes that claim and then just casually moves on. It's very presumptuous and it's like... Telling how plainly he put it because yeah. it sounds like something that he was told since he started. And, and this is my and this is what scares me. Uh, my 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 belief tends to be that if if this actor was thirty years old, uh, I would buy that it was publicity that they're just doing it because that's uh, racism so hot right now in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. But twenty years old, I I buy that they actually have been raised to believe this that people that the reason why you on an, in an ensemble cast who was not the lead actor of the mm-hmm. show didn't get more people coming through your line because of the color of your skin and not because you just simply weren't the main character thank you of, of the show you he started when sense. he was like 13 he's yeah. grown up with this show and it's the main thing he's known for and when you're that age getting your first breakout role you're going to believe what the adults around you tell you about what it means to the world that scares me. Uh, it scares me because uh, they're going to feed into that narrative. And he does point out that he says, uh, he, he added, even now, some people don't follow me or don't support me because I'm black. Sometimes overseas, you feel the racism. You feel the bigotry. Sometimes it's hard to talk about and for people to understand. But when I was younger, it definitely affected me a lot. He's kind of putting it on, on people mm. in, uh, in another country here. He said, why is this a deep conversation right now? Why am I the least favorite? Why don't I have followers? I'm on the same as everybody else in season one, but then, you know, it's a sad story. It's because you're the black child in the show. It's so sad that he's on a TV show, first of all. Very, very sad. I mean, it's it's, a lot of privilege to have. Yeah, well, you know, he's not the... He's not a breakout character. No. He's not a breakout actor. He's also not the only black actor in the show, either. You know, I I haven't seen it since the the end of the second season. Uh, I just kind of... Felt, or the the one where Millie Bobby Brown, went, like and, he, and you know she's a breakout star. She's been in yeah. Movies. She's absolutely yeah. Finn Wolfhard has been. Yeah. He has he has yeah, a band. Yeah. Though I feel bad for him because sure. he's kind of been ki- like typecast that he's going to play Finn Wolfhard literally forever. That's fine. Like yeah. what he's does a that new mean? Michael Sarah. Like, he's a new Michael Sarah. Yeah, he's kind of like uh, like the Ghostbusters. Like anything he's in, he's just kind of Stranger Things esque. Yeah. Like well, sci fi. Do you think he's typecasted for that genre, yeah. or is he typecasted as a certain personality? I think it's I think it's the way he looks. I, I think, think he's going to get certain roles because of the what the way his image is presented on for, camera for now for now because he hasn't really done anything different like uh if you watched red letter media's uh review of ghostbusters afterlife yeah. they kept referring to him as stranger things yeah exactly <laughs> in, <laughs> in the you yeah, know when, like well it. stranger things went and he finds a car and is this <laughs> uh so i always i thought that was funny but i mean he's he's in a band that yeah. like will play like at small clubs and yeah. stuff and, it's know, interesting how many musicians are are in band or how many actors are in bands. Yeah, but I mean, he has at least he has other things going on. Yeah, and then you have the uh, I don't remember his name, the one that had the tooth. Yeah, the teeth. Yeah. And then yeah, he he name. did the prank show, yeah. right? So like he was able to do things. This kid, he has fifteen point four million followers on the Instagram, right. but he's a victim. That's hilarious. Right? And that makes <sighs> that, that makes little to no sense to me. But it's also like I feel like for them, they're going to push that narrative because it's it's beneficial. They've made it beneficial for them in society right now. Everybody doesn't like me because some people, you know, don't like that I'm black. It's like okay, I mean, what to me is interesting care. is how the small little bizarre ways journalism has gotten around all this stuff. Because you see how they write this: mm-hmm. black is capitalized, but white is 
not yeah. capitalized. Well, uh, we they decided actually, on that a few a few years ago. The, we, but we, who? Like what central like, authority like the, the dictates manuals, you, you have know, the to? The Chicago Manual and all these people. The, the really? colleges pumped it out so they like the newspapers and the magazines have to follow these guidelines. And they, they have to. That's considered uh, bad grammar yeah. if they don't. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, not in, to me. I, but to them, they think you're a bad person if you don't capitalize so a certain says, color. Yeah. So he says, McLaughlin uh, said as a teen that he was wondering why he didn't have as many social media followers as some of his co-stars and asked his parents why he was so often the least favorite among the, uh, the castmates. And this is the worst part, too, because this means his parents said this to him and put this in his head. They said, because I was born with beautiful chocolate skin, I'm not loved, he said. But that's why <laughs> with my platform, I want to spread positivity and love because I do not give hate uh, back to people who give hate to me. I can appreciate yeah, the, I, the positive message of it, but it. I feel bad for him that this was what he was taught, mm -hmm. right? Like, if you're entering mm -hmm. this space, Hollywood, you're going to be bombarded by people who are going to have opinions on you, good or bad. Yeah. Uh, and they're not always going to be attributed to the color of your skin. In fact, I would argue that despite what Hollywood says, very little of it has to do with that. I think when you're blatantly not one of the favorites from your ensemble cast, it's easier to blame it on an immutable characteristic mm -hmm. that you have. Um, you'd think otherwise, but it's easier to blame it on that than to look at how you could improve your performance. Yeah. Um, well, because he was even... completely outshined by the girl who played his little sister. And people like her way more. People like Finn Wolfhard way more. The girl from Stranger Things kind of falls in the same category as the girl from Ghostbusters 2016, who also ended up being kind of the uh, the breakout role of that movie. Like so, mm -hmm. the the young girls are, mm -hmm. are like they're they're starting to have their careers flourish because they're getting more uh, they're getting roles that put them front and center, yeah, uh, which allows them when it works to shine. And, and these side characters aren't getting that same effort, but it, it takes a lot of skill finesse. Uh, and work to kind of work your way up from a side character yeah. and become a main character. Because if that little cast. girl hadn't been so well liked when she showed up, they wouldn't have even brought her back for other seasons. Exactly. So, she might have never showed up again. And they get a lot of um, notes from studios that say, we want more of this, we want more of this. Sometimes that's just not in the cards. Uh, and, these stu and these studios have what they want, and it feels like mm -hmm. he's never going to get that, uh, that push. In this show, he may pivot to something else down the line that ends up being more successful for him. He could end up, you could find out that this dude does ends up doing something where he's the lead character and he ends up leaning into it and being very, very good, but he isn't going to be given that opportunity in ensemble cast, which is what a majority of Hollywood is doing right now is mm -hmm. ensemble casts. Well, wouldn't you think it's, I, I don't know, since you can change how you perform and you can improve, wouldn't it be easier to cope with thinking, oh, people just want more from my my acting yeah than to think they hate me for who i was who it's, i am and like easier my to that, uncontrollable though, characteristics i mean i feel like that's what it's, it would have been it seems like ago. a generational difference yes, that exactly well, because do you people don't like you as much you would want to improve and change mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. people don't like you as much so you assume the absolute worst of their intentions yeah. well do you guys think uh compared to the other char the other players in the ensemble that he's on their level or or not as good of an actor I always as them. thought they kind of gave him the writers gave him just poor lines yeah. and a poor arc in general I started watching the newest season I couldn't get far into it but I and it seemed like they were giving him like more of like a, a thing like there was the love yeah. thing happening it was falling apart and it was maybe he has in the new season some With ability Sadie to Sinks act more character yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah like something was happening there but I just I just didn't care but um I that's more of a season, failure of the showrunners. That's then. failure of right, showrunners. Yeah. But in the first season, I feel like it was both things. Poor writing for his character, plus he just wasn't up there with They're the also his... adding more and more new characters yeah. like Billy True. and like and they Vecna. become stars. And they've really changed the tone of the show as they gr they've yeah. grown up as that's, well that's to more common. serious, yeah. less whimsical, mm -hmm. uh, less kid-friendly also. Mm -hmm. Um, and that makes sense, but maybe he's just having a hard time adapting his own yeah. performance to that. 
I don't know. As shows evolve, especially if they start adding characters but not taking characters out in yes. tandem, like like when they add but don't subtract, you'll find that uh, the characters that were considered the main kind of ensemble parts that weren't the main star, but mm-hmm. the the lead, uh, the second co-lead, will start getting pushed to the backdrop in uh, in favor of either the new players or that lead will get an even more advanced role. Yeah. and it seems mm-hmm. like he's just he was just off the mark. Like they, Family Matters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> great show. You know. Uh, Ur- Urkel was not supposed to be like like yes. the thing, yeah. But that took over. Yeah, how could you deny Urkel? And then and then you have you have Urkel and the, and the father doing more things together than the actual yep. father and son, which makes no sense. <laughs> but you know uh, you, that you show got wacky. <laughs> he was I mean, time the, traveling at one point. I was thinking of the same thing happened with like Arrow uh, when in season one and two Oliver Queen was literally in almost every scene in the show, and the actor actually said that it was like it started to take a toll on him mentally because he's doing nineteen hours a day, six days a week. But as the show progressed and they add more characters, he becomes a background player almost in his own show still getting the most screen time but way more spread out over a bunch of side characters that weren't introduced to later seasons which seemed like nobody actually liked mm. uh, and that's very common in that genre yeah and uh, it's not like stranger things can't give other characters like billy like what mary's saying or or like the mother you know in that first season when she's freaking out they can get their due and get good lines and get chances to act really well so I don't know what happened with, with him because I think he could be a good actor. He just, I guess he's being outshined. Is it a sign of the, the times we live in or is it a sign of, do you, do you think this is something that we're only seeing because it's Hollywood or do you think this is actually a sign of uh, our culture at large? Do you this think, is what he's saying? Yeah. Do you, do you think that, that, that this is unique to them <laughs> in Hollywood or do you think that this is going to be a broader problem on a societal level? I think this is just a manufactured idea in this kid. Yeah. Any child actor these days is going to be infected with these ideas before they have a chance to form opinions of their own. That's terrifying to me because they're going to carry. This is what I talk about when I talk about uh, Pete, you can think that this stuff is frivolous and that it doesn't matter, but these people's social media profiles are immense. They have lots of followers. Those clips will be seen by hundreds of thousands of people, and those ideas will then filter down into the populace, uh, and they become a mouthpiece for ideas that they don't even yeah. fully understand mm-hmm. because they're so young. Uh, and that's where I think that people He's one of the oldest yeah. cast members, so the rest of them maybe... Are, are even more impressionable at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Pay less attention. Like, people are paying less like, attention to... Like, think about Gaten yeah. Matarasso's, um, the the kid, I don't know, like, he did this this show where he wanted to trick people into oh, thinking God. that they got a job. Oh, that's awful. Right. And then that. and then pull the, the yeah, you, no job carpet out from under yeah, them. Yeah, that's some elitist and stuff And can you right imagine... There. Yes, it is. Dang. Can you imagine... <laughs> the backing of all those adults in that production that made him yes. think that was a good idea. Yes. Perhaps knowing that it would embroil him in controversy, but pushing him into the idea anyway and telling him it was fine. How old would he have been at the time of that? I think he was like 17. <laughs> like, I feel like even at 17, you should understand that that's You like, should, that's but he was, he like, was in this... this industry since he was like 11 yeah. years old. And if you have people... If you have yes men at the age of like 12, yeah. what will you get into? What trouble will and you get into? It's industry, endless. They're industry but they're, yes men. They were prob- he was probably like, wow, I'm going to be the next Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. You I, know, I'm going to be the next prank. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, no. Do you think many people his age are, are really pushing to be the next Ashton Kutcher? I, well, I can't imagine. Right. I, I mean, you know. <laughs> He's making a comeback now. He, he was sick for a while. He had. Uh, he had the Gaten uh, kid? Uh, no, or no, Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. Kutcher. Yeah, Ashton okay. Kutcher. I never knew he was gone. Yeah, he's I gone. love Ashton. Uh, he's uh, he got sick. You know? He had his Netflix show uh, about being on a ranch or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. the ranch. That's cool. Out. But yeah. uh, and then well, there were, I, I think I think it had, it probably got canceled because his his brother on the show, who uh, there was there was some controversy mm-hmm. about things that he may have done or didn't do. Yeah, and uh, and whether it was manufactured or not. Was Sam Elliott in that show. Yeah, he was the fa- he yeah, was the Sam, father. He also got into like trouble recently because he dared like question I I, I think gender ideology. A Jane or something. Campion it, uh, cowboy yeah. movie. Yeah, he's like they wouldn't there wouldn't be like gay people in in these movies and people like didn't get like he he clearly didn't mean it to be abrasive. They took it out of context. They took it out of context. But yeah. I was like he's like a gazillion years old, so it's like he doesn't understand. But also, <laughs> he's, I mean, he's a man. Yes, like he's a he's an an actual man. Yeah. I mean, you ever see Roadhouse? It's it's, yeah. it's funny too because yeah, I, I, we we think back. Uh, we talk pretty frequently about how like people are look younger and younger 
now like a high schooler now if you look back to those videos of like high schoolers when they're like graduating at 18 from the 80s and they all look like they're in their 30s mm -hmm. like because we live <laughs> yeah. such sheltered lives now that mm -hmm. you're just you're a baby is it forever. that though because we were still comfortable and sheltered in the 90s I mean, they, they were probably smoking cigarettes from 14 upwards maybe they're maybe the vape doesn't make the 14 year olds <laughs> age as quickly I think it's, now i think in 20 years you're the gonna look back at, at people and go wow they look so old I think that's I mean, yeah. It's like a thing that really? always happens. It's even always, like, yeah. I mean, look, look at look at older pictures of you know young people from the 1900s, like the but it was know, hard living, like yeah. the early 1900s. Yeah. Yeah. But they were becoming adults quicker. Yeah. yeah. And maybe it didn't. Maybe that affected the way they looked. Yeah. Though. Probably was, too quickly. But yeah, Mary, you're right. It's, it, yeah. it is. I I think it has to do with hard living. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. what's the what's the worst thing mm -hmm. that a a teenager has to go through like they're not working in yeah. the factory every yeah. day the worst things teenagers country. go through now are like mental illness oh no some, and... somebody made fun of me on yeah. on uh on snapchat <laughs> i actually i i actually don't like I, I try to not joke about that one as much because it's like can you imagine like if you're like in high school now and somebody says something really awful to you or say or or uh, posts a video of you without your permission. Now everyone sees it, and you're kind of you can't escape it. It's one thing if it's like somebody think says about something, the amount of fight videos that come out of high yeah. schools these days. Mm. Yeah, when it's all on social media. You yeah. can't escape it. But you're right about the about hard living. We were that was one of the critiques that a lot of people had of the movie Prey, the the Predator prequel. Yeah, where they're like the girl looks like she, she's too prim, too perfect looking mm -hmm. to have lived in the 1700s. All the characters, there's no muscle tone to any of the boys. They all look like they've lived I mean, she didn't have any muscle no, either. No. But, even though she would have. But their faces, even though she's 25, she looks like she's 17, mm -hmm. uh, and she's supposed to be playing that age, but they don't look like they've lived an actual day of work mm -hmm. in their entire lives. Uh, and that seems kind of... And they of, also had attitudes that were modern in... in the, that the was pre modern a, age. Right. She's like, yeah, I want to be a hunter just because you says I you said I can't. I'm like, they didn't say that in the 1700s. Literally no <laughs> They literally would have killed you. No native woman would have ever no. even thought that no. to begin with, let alone say it. So uh that but, casting by the way with Prey, it's so weird that that I don't know how what, the budget must have been low. Yeah. Because, you know, there are other movies where where they make the actors like go into like crazy training yeah. like All you know the, the men, movie yeah. watchmen yeah. yeah right uh you know um the, the girl who played uh the dr manhattan i can't remember her yeah. character's name mm -hmm. uh uh malin ackerman uh i i talked to her and uh, i was like hey the watchman you know i was like i met her at a place and she was like i, I asked her i asked her about her workouts mm -hmm. and she's like oh my god like she she had like a navy seal training right. her mm -hmm. for like three months yeah. and she was like she, she was saying the training was brutal but she was in like in the best shape she'll ever right. be in the, <laughs> the same thing happened like if you watch all of the blade movies you see wesley snipes uh his physique stays fairly the same but then like uh the the girl in that and then ryan reynolds physique changes because of reshoots because at the heart <laughs> like when the when the movie was in main photography uh principal photography they're right. in the best shape of their life because they were given five six months to get into that shape mm. and now marvel has contracts that their actors have to put on a certain amount of muscle tone uh huh. so like then you'll see same thing happened with batman uh with bruce wayne uh in the new ones with uh uh ben affleck like you see his muscle physique change oh in the justice league yeah, yeah. you see oh, his yeah. physique change because mm -hmm. they had to go back and reshoot stuff so they have to hide it with like why is he wearing a vest right now we have no idea but uh, <laughs> it hides the fact that he's like his face is plumper uh and you know mm -hmm. it's definitely put on weight so. but with with prey though it's so bizarre that they wouldn't cast i mean f fine i guess they're good actors or whatever and, and i don't care about like oh well she looks too young or uh but they could have at least said hey like just you know help us hit the gym it's not like you have like a lot of lines yeah. to memorize right <laughs> the boy in the boy it was the boys the boys actually seemed like they had less physique than even a normal teenage like and they young they adult. were portrayed to be morons yes. like incompetent <laughs> morons morons yeah, sure. running at the predator and being like hilariously like modern sexism towards her rather than like like the yeah. way they were treating her and uh, like a 1950s housewife yeah. instead of a a native woman living in a tribe like yep. it it was just jarring there's um, so much suspension of disbelief you have to have like okay well i'm gonna pretend that 
these people could actually survive in the wild. Well, yeah. they're saying it's a sci-fi <laughs> movie. It does nothing about it has to be realistic, right. which is obviously intellectually like dishonest. If you, can if you can believe that there's a predator, like then you have to believe everything else about the movie. You know? Yeah, if you can believe yeah. that the space aliens come. You have to accept everything else. When sci-fi is only appealing insofar as you take one or a couple of elements of reality and twist them exactly some mm -hmm. other That's way. That's why like, it works. Not because literally everything about the story is completely off of our our normal experience it's not supposed to be wacky on all fronts it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a real world that's been yeah. invaded yeah. by one element that makes you think that that could happen uh, that that's how the world would form around that one major change in society that's yeah. where you lose me with like multiverse of madness yeah. because it it literally is exactly as it sounds yeah. they they were cross-dimensionally traveling through like I don't know, a world made of paint. And it's like, <laughs> wait, you're losing me. You're yeah. majorly losing me. Did you ever what? hear the author, Karen Russell? She mm -hmm. wrote Swamp Swamplandia. She, she talked about this a lot. Swamplandia. Like a Swamplandia. sequel to Portlandia? <laughs> no, it was before Portlandia, actually. But uh, she talked about how she had a lot of stories that weren't resonating with people. And it's because she realized there was just no law to them. They were yeah, grounded in any reality, perfect. right? And then when she realized she pared it down to like a reality and then tweak one thing, which is, I think, Swamplandia yes. and some of her short stories, then it really connected with people because it's like you recognize the world, but then it yeah. gets twisted when something, she turns something upside it's down. Like, it's like Ghostbusters. Yeah. Okay. The original, I'm not talking about number two or, or even the third one. Yeah. Just the original. Yep. It, everything feels like it's grounded in some kind of reality. Mm -hmm. It's not over the top. There are some, there are some th crazy things that happen, yep. but it's all in line with, with that universe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you had the remake, you know, female Ghostbusters, and everything is just so over the top. Yeah. They, there's no jo there's no jokes. I didn't watch it. There's no jokes or pop culture that references in the first one. In, no. the, in the original oh, yeah. one. In yeah, this yeah. one, they're making jokes left and right. Mm -hmm. And they're like... Because it has to be self-referential. And, it's, and it's all... And, and the way they shot it, it was like so much of it was... Um, it was like it was improvisation. You know, they had like a, base, a basic story structure, mm -hmm. and they said... Hey, just go at it. You mm -hmm. girls are funny. Yep. You, yep. you girls Which are funny. You got it from here. They're just not. And, yeah. and that the over the t it was the tone that I think threw a lot mm -hmm. of people off. Yeah. And and then, of course, they have ref they, they're like, well, it's not in the same universe as the first one. Mm -hmm. My favorite But then part they'll have what? like, the, like uh, they'll ha they'll bring back everybody in cameos. Multiverse of Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah well, exactly. They're, they're already, they're already no law. They're, they're, uh, they're going to be, they're going to be no doing law. that when they when they do the Mind new one. My favorite part about the first Ghostbusters is is the is Walter Peck being like they're not they're not ghosts. It's a, it's a trick, and he's like. He's basically comes from the city and he's like, he's like, they don't what? have a permit for this. Like a permit for what? Do you guys have, do you have like, do you have ghost permits? That's not a thing, but it's because it's like, that's them. That's people trying to process the fact that there now are ghosts in a world yeah. that previously did not have them. There right. needs to be an internal logic to any sci-fi world even in the for it to be appealing and mm -hmm. intriguing even mm -hmm. in the caleb mclaughlin story they mentioned lord of the rings rings of power right and one of the one of the, <laughs> one of the things that i criticized about it i said the diversity actually doesn't bother me but there's a scene where like they're on a boat and there's like uh there's an asian guy there's a white guy there's a black guy. i'm like no they would be from three completely separate areas back yeah. then because they wouldn't have lived in the same they wouldn't be part of the same ship they would be in different areas now if you showed me one ship with one group that looked like this one ship with another ship that looks like this then I can follow through what the hell you're talking they, about yeah. because there's internal Rings logic. Rings of there. Power is shattering the intricately crafted mm -hmm. uh, universe that was created by Tolkien. And I think C.S. Lewis did an amazing job of doing that as well with his fantasy, even though it's less uh, known and the Chronicles of Narnia films were less liked than the Peter Jackson films. But like... Silent Planet, the, the space trilogy that C.S. Lewis wrote, it's like taking something that's very familiar to us and just tweaking one aspect of it. So it's, think about a planet that has an intelligent race of, of uh, some creature that's like rational, has rational yeah. capacity, but they never fell from grace. Mm -hmm. And and for all that reason, there are so many different things about the the planet that are that are different from Earth. And then like in Narnia even, there were some like things that threw you for a loop, like there was just a random lamp post, but there was no other technology mm -hmm. in the in that universe. But still, it's like 
there needs to be some internal logic that it follows for the audience to recognize the Find story the as like something that relates to their experience. Mm -hmm. Like you, right? Ghostbusters did it well, like you're saying, mm -hmm. where you have crazy ghosts happening, but it's rooted in the city and the city you know. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and yeah. There's, and there's actors that, that handle it really well. And then I made me think of The Leftovers, which I mention all the time, it's my favorite show of all time, which is a completely insane show about people disappearing, like a giant part of the population disappears, but it's rooted in the grief mm -hmm. of a real world. So all that, I have to mention this because this is my, like one of my favorite writers of all time. And Donald Barthelme, I don't know if you ever read him, he wrote like The School and all this stuff, but he wrote like really crazy stories about like what we're talking about. There might be ghosts or a giant balloon taking over the city, stuff like that. And he once told his class, uh, what, what must wacky mode do? Break their hearts. And that's, that, I always think of that because if you're as crazy as you got to go with your ghosts or your no lawlessness, you got to also find a way to break their hearts with the human level to it, you know? And if you do both those, you can get as wacky as you want, in my opinion. Do you remember how the leftovers ended? Mm hmm yeah like yeah. i don't I, I didn't see the last it was like I yeah. I saw last season i'll spoil it for now it was a conversation that kind of recounted something i don't know if you remember that it was i think mm -hmm. it was carrie coon and and justin thoreau talking oh okay yeah yeah i didn't it was see kind the, of uh, subtle it was people i think people were pretty let down no i liked it well i, I like him season. i like justin thoreau yeah like, oh yeah I, i've owned every format of mulholland drive <sighs> that there is to own right. you know? yeah. another, another example of what we're talking about a concrete example would also be the x-files which is literally looking for uh aliens and ghosts while working for the federal bureau of investigation which is ridiculous <laughs> but the rest of is the world is it though is, is it though uh is join me on my new show Cashman next month huh? <laughs> but like they were they were out they, they the way they were portrayed is like outsiders from the rest yes. of the agency right. because and you that's why to their characters yep. and you related to their characters they were exactly. great characters yep yeah, so. which is how you break their hearts. Let's go super chats. Yes, Yesh said no beanie. What a weenie! Uh, uh again. Wow. We will have to get. Uh, I was <laughs> not going. I wouldn't call you that, but you know. I'm they, sorry. They, they would call you that. But you how did this become that. a thing? Like you mentioned it, not them. Now you're making. But it But then a thing they latched on. And they were like, you need it. to wear a beanie. <laughs> it's just like the shopping cart thing. Mary. You have to be very careful here because any amount of uh, of like something you have mentioned offhand will be remembered forever. Okay, guys. Dunk Tank got mentioned uh -oh. on like episode two. Uh oh. Maybe Tomorrow. Two hundred some <laughs> Tomorrow. And they still talk about it. I'm gonna wear it. Don't give in to them. I will send. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do peer pressure. <laughs> I have to do something. Oh, Look yeah, at sorry, this guy. Sorry. He wear can do five beanies. Like, where <laughs> there you go. There you go. Like H3 did. Yes. have the longest <laughs> beanie ever. Exactly. <laughs> but the, they will remember. They will remember forever. Thank it's you. Like, it doesn't matter how, how long ago it was. They, they have uh, elephant memories. Yep. They do. Shards of Narsil said uh, PB. Lucas's character was meant to be an obstacle and annoying in the first couple of seasons, so of course he wasn't going to be the favorite. Uh, right. I mean, he was, he was supposed kill. to be likable or relatable as the person in the show, like you, who can't believe what they're experiencing and and is afraid of what they're doing, like of them going around their parents and keeping secrets. That's supposed to be relatable, but yeah. yes, maybe it didn't. I but think it's no so fun. I think more than ever nowadays when I, when I when we talk about because we get into a lot of the weeds about defining what makes a character good and what character what makes a character bad mm -hmm. and it feels like you can never actually settle on a definition but one of the most in, amazing things about the industry of Hollywood when it actually works is that when it does work it's amazing but it's it's kind of like uh, when it when it, when it works you don't notice it but when it doesn't work you do. Like you, you always recognize something that's bad, mm -hmm. but when it's done right, you may not actually mm -hmm. give it the credit it deserves. And I go back and watch a lot of old stuff and look at the way that, uh, for instance, we talk a lot about female characters. And I, I look at them when they're done extremely well. And it's almost like they're trying so hard now that they won't succeed because back then they did it without thinking about it. They yeah. just made the character. Mm -hmm. Now they're like, we have to make this character because it's going to have to represent something bigger mm -hmm. than just whatever this character is supposed to be in the story. Cause they're always trying to extrapolate to what it means for all of society. Yeah. Yes. And they almost set themselves up for failure. It's like I, what I always, when I was teaching writing classes, I would always tell students like you never start a story. At least I don't think you should with an idea of like a theme that you want to tell. You got to have a character first and then you can thread that theme eventually through that character. But if you start with an idea like this big idea of like, I'm going to change the world, some justice stuff, 
or whatever it is, it's just not. You're gonna see it everywhere. It's gonna and it's gonna infect the whole the whole story. Feels like that would be hard to actually finish the story if you think that way. Well, we get a lot of them these days, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're, they're in it, living in a world filled with those stories right now. It's, uh, it's the worst. Oh, or like propaganda. Think about, think about what they do to like the the they race swap these characters and they set these actors and actresses up for failure. Literally, you you know that they're going to be mad at you. For doing this it's not the actor's fault they just took a job not even just yeah. race swapping or gender swapping characters though it's just any character like moses ingram playing rava they will preempt backlash over race mm -hmm. race bait with the headlines and then this actor or actress is left to think, wow, people hate me for my race. Mm -hmm. yep. If they genuinely believe yeah. that, which I hope that they don't. I'm sure there's there's obviously people who out, out there who hate people, yeah. clearly. But I'm so divorced from this world. Like growing up, almost all my heroes were, were not white, right? Yeah. Like whether it was music, sports. So like to me, I think this has to be manufactured and there's a very small percentage clearly of people who do not like people for but whatever definitely reason. not the gen z kids who like but stranger things definitely not this <laughs> that's just like that's, that's excuse almost, me that's even more insulting like, like do like, we live on the same planet yeah this isn't no. a bunch of like you didn't and it was in like it, it have you seen in, these kids twitter accounts yeah. and what they put in that bio like they have they all have their pronouns in bio right and blm it's, not enough. it's never and, enough and a cab and enough. uh the ukraine and yes. Ukraine, oh, yeah. you can't that. You can't et cetera, that. et cetera. <laughs> like they're not racist. I know that they're not racist, yeah. at least not in the way that he's saying. Well, yeah, yeah. They don't realize that they might be. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but By only was, thinking about skin. Well, color. you know, well, he was he part of what he was saying was that, you know, overseas fans like, well, yeah, you, you mean other countries are racist against other races? I can't believe that they're not as enlightened yeah. and as progressive as the United this States. Amazing country. I would believe that maybe from like I don't know China, China. Yeah. yeah but yeah. not the UK not yeah. Belgium no but then you ridiculous have, but then he says oh well the you know the comic-con the lines of comic-con they're, they're less I get the the smaller lines yeah but I don't you know you'd have to explain to me uh was he with the rest of yeah. the cast yeah. or was Good he by point. himself yeah. uh sure. or it was he was alone yeah, no and, one else. And he's a he's a he's B list yeah. at yeah. at at yeah. best. Yeah, right. It's true. Uh, because he his, he, and I'm not saying that he'll. He's not a standout. I'm not saying he'll never break out. Mm -hmm. But everybody else on that show, I mean, even even I mean, the, even the Chrissy Wake Up guy, like he's, <laughs> you know, he he's like a he broke out just just from that line in the TikTok meme. Mm -hmm. Imagine you know? like you're like uh you're at like a Doctor Who convention and you're like one of the in your one of the uh companions and then like they end up like why isn't my line as long as the line is whoever this iteration yeah. of Doctor Who is. That's what you're saying. And Comic-Con yeah. has I mean if you if you look at the agenda and like the guest list, I mean people people look at that and they they handle it like a military operation. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm going to go here first. I'm going to go here. Yeah. I'm going to get here early. I'm mm -hmm. going to, I'm going to, I'm going to see Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters. Yeah. No, I mean, no. hey, I would like, to, I would love to get Ernie, <laughs> yeah. Ernie Hudson on here. Ernie Hudson's great. Like him and Amon Walker are two uh, older, like uh, older actors from that generation that I would love. I'm going to petition for Rick Moranis. Uh, well, did you know? Good he got, luck. He got punched he in the face. He got punched in the face. Yes, he, like, he did. He, he, like, in New York, of yeah, course he like, did. Yeah, like, yeah. They're like Rick Moranis is That's back. That's how they welcome you. And now. then the next day, they're like Rick Moranis got punched in the face. I'm like, now we're never gonna see yeah. him again. Yeah, no, yeah. he he's been a recluse anyway, and now his, his wife died, I, yeah. I think, and he he like uh, to, that's, what the, that's what the myth is. His his wife passed away from from, get, from she was sick or something, yeah. Yeah. and then he like quit acting to take care of the kids. Well, I think the last thing he did was like a Mint Mobile. Really? Is that the one, with, that, with is that the one that Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds owns? Yeah, he's yeah. like, hey, it's look, it's Rick Moranis. It's really? like, yeah, I don't know why I'm here. Like, <laughs> Mary would hate that. Mary, lo Mary, Mary I, hates I, I Ryan Reynolds. I don't like Ryan Reynolds. <gasps> Not one bit. Maybe he shrunk his wife. That's what happened. Maybe Rick Moranis shrunk his wife. She won't get that right. That's what happened. <laughs> That's what happened. Um, <laughs> what? Honey, I shrunk the kid. Oh, oh my God. God. Mary knows. She that knows. We've went over this. Literally, everyone Mary has seen that movie, Brad. The 90s. That, that, that's Mary not, knows that, the that's 90s. That's not true. There's definitely probably at least one person who has not seen that movie. Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean literally everyone. Literally I know everyone. you hate getting corrected on the use of literally. Let's continue. This, you're not Lydia. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to start calling her literally Lydia. She, I, I was surprised that she brought, it, brought up the correct usage of literally. Yes. Literally yesterday. Literally yesterday. Literally. Johnny Derp said racism of the gaps. Any disparity is racism. Uh, That's and true. So That's true, King. True. Mm. Everyone who hates me is racist, and uh, everyone I don't like is a bot. 
So true. Yes. Waffle Sensei said, I just hate the dude's character in the last season. Their lifelong friend, because he wants to play basketball, proceeds to lead a group of violent witch hunters to kill his friends, but sort of changes his mind in the end. Maybe. They're not doing him any favors in the script. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Even from the beginning. Do you think that, do you think like uh, writers ever do that on purpose? Do you think that like make just, a foil? I would sure. love to, I would love Absolutely. to see a show. Oh, yeah. I would love to see a show about mm. a petty Hollywood writer who just goes around and like finds people he doesn't like on shows he works and then just well, ruins. Well, they the tried program. to make Jonathan Byers uh, sort of a foil or like someone you don't sympathize with at first, but you eventually come around to um, because of the scene where he took a picture of yeah. Of uh, what's Nancy Wheeler yeah. changing? Well, I seem I seem to remember uh, an an issue on Grey's Anatomy with Katherine Heigl and how she basically kind of slammed the writers and they were you know and she's like famously mm. difficult to work with from what I understand. Yeah, it's like it's not it's not her fault. Yeah, it's she, the writers' fault. She uh, that everybody hates me. She had like a really f like um, she had a show called State of Affairs, which is like the most blatant like ripoff of Homeland right after <laughs> Homeland came out. And it's like, you are not Claire Danes. Oh, uh, and and no. she's like, it was sad because there was like other actors on that show that were actually really good. But she just, you know, she by that time, her reputation had already started to kind of be tainted mm -hmm. as like this woman that's just impossible to work with. Which I she, kind of appreciate now. Now I want them to like Hollywood's so annoying now. Like, good, let's hire the annoying people. They're not. They're they're not like. At least they're not trying to hide it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, she, so we'll just like uh, like have her work like with, Ezra uh, Miller. Like Ezra, yeah. Well, I mean, just don't have <laughs> don't let any kids around with Ezra there. But other than that, yeah, make everyone else's life more difficult for the for the love. <laughs> Uh, Waffle Sensei also said, "Tisk tisk, Mary. The lamppost was carried over from New York City, while Aslan battles with." the white witch in their interdimensional fight from the ma magician's nephew. Yeah. And then someone else uh, added Hobbit added the lamppost in Narnia is explained in the magician's nephew book six out of seven. I definitely read that, but I, it was so long ago that I didn't mm. remember it. It just seemed out of place to me. Um, Johnny back gave us a thumbs up. Thank, Thank you. Johnny. you. Halls and the kid said, don't forget to sign the book, Shane. <laughs> I won't. I was Are you going to forget? Over. No, it's <laughs> okay. been a while. Sorry. Juan Solo said, did y'all see the leaked Indiana Jones 5 trailer yesterday? They brought back Sala and de-aged Harrison Ford. Mm -hmm. Trailer also ended with thugs asking, who is this guy? And Indiana saying, I'm her godfather. She, uh, he's going to be the, they're going to phase him out. Uh, uh, I'm not a huge fan of de-aging. Uh, oh my God. Wait, creepy. See, yeah, that, I have a story for you tomorrow that's even crazy. Oh. Uh, I, I, won't, okay. I won't do that. You but, can't reveal it now. No, I cannot. But uh, like Indiana Jones is one of those ones where Harrison Ford. I think he'll just always come back. He he always comes back if they if they ask him to because they. they yeah, I think this is the last one now. Yeah. Like Spielberg's producing it, but yeah. he's not directing, directing it. it. He didn't. George Lucas didn't even write it. They should go back to the to the Shia LaBeouf well. But it's just uh, try again with Shia LaBeouf. But you know who's in it? Uh, Fleabag is in it. Have you seen <laughs> Fleabag? No. I heard that was good though. It's yeah. It's yeah. it's a. Uh, B it's a BBC yeah. series, so, yeah. two seasons. Uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge. Yeah, I mean she's yeah. Uh, she's in it, and you, Which, did, did it will see, be it will be feminist. Because well, did you see? Nah, well, did you see the um, uh, the D twenty three? It, it was like Harrison Ford was on stage yeah, and she was there, and, yeah. and he was like, "It's it, this is a really great movie," and it's. You know, and he pointed to her as like, you know, because she's great. So he has to do that. Uh, the um, but it, it didn't have it didn't have yes. that. Uh, it it sounded genuine. It didn't sound like when Bill Murray was like, yeah, this new Ghostbusters is gonna be really good because these ladies are <laughs> great, they're really funny. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> as he like, he's like, I did it. He's, he's like, Can I go now? Yeah. Uh, but Daniel Craig said the same thing about Phoebe Waller Bridge because she did a rewrite for uh, uh, no yeah, Time the last to Die. one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so she's uh, I'm not a huge fan of her because like I said, bringing in uh, a female perspective for Bond, which I don't believe is actually inherently necessary ever. Uh, because it's not written from a female's perspective. I don't care. I don't want to know their perspective on it. I but want she to know totally makes fun of feminism. Yeah. And like she's a feminist in the show, but she's like a really bad feminist. Like they, they, she, it's, it's not like a woke, Fleabag is not like a woke show. I wouldn't, the, uh, what, I don't what know. year did that come out? 
it's it's a few years old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I'm pretty um, hesitant for anything newer than 2017. Ah, uh, it's some things are timeless. There's uh, there's um, I have been uh, rewatching um, Wallander, which was a BBC show, which is just it's just depressing. It's it's, it's like uh, it's Kenneth Branagh. It's a it's a police drama, uh-huh. uh, and it's just very like I love it because it's just depressing. But like nowadays, I, they wouldn't be able to do it. Did you ever watch? Uh, uh, Prime Suspect. No, I've heard uh, that's one of those ones. Helen that's on, Marin. Yeah. I. I uh, who, who made that? Like, uh, what, what station? There was what? BBC. Okay. Yeah. I, I literally just got BritBox so that I can watch like nothing but British uh, okay. British stuff. Because <laughs> uh, ghosts. Have you watched the the ghost show? The one on uh, actually uh, that might be Sky. The there's one the one with Rose MacGyver. And, like they they own the bed and breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen the first episode. Yeah, the, she's great. The British one's great. Uh, oh, the original. Okay, it's based yeah, off the British yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, but the actress that's in the that's in the one on ABC is from the show I Zombie, and she's she's really really great. She's super like uh, Australian, uh, and and then she or I'm sorry, super British. And then she, in the American version, she's like doing her regular accent, and I like look for the words that slip because like that's my favorite thing is when you can catch their <laughs> their few words that slip through that they can't quite get. I love the first season of I Zombie. Yeah. It was so oh good. yeah. It's a, it's a, it was so it good. got really bad. It like, got really bad. Is that really on your fast. list? It's on. It's on my list of strong shows. female characters. I have. A, I have. A, I have a running <laughs> list of like the the lie that has been that there aren't strong female characters. I've, I've got like a, a two page list of nothing uh-huh. but shows. Yeah. That the, I put that first season up there with just about any of that genre. Yeah. At the time because she is like her the the guy that she works with Raul Coley the the guy who plays um the the other doctor. Uh, and then Peyton, and then the the other actor. It's a great show. What about? Uh, I know we're getting off track here. Wonderfalls. Do you, do you I never saw it. Mm-hmm. You know? Do you know what it is no. though? Uh, it's about it's about a girl that she gets uh, like hit in the head, and then she can like the she sees things like talking to her and then like she solves mysteries. It was like on mm. Fox for like two seasons. Sounds, sounds awesome. like the greatest thing ever. I need to go find. Uh, I can't. Awesome. I can't remember who. Uh, who directed it? But it was the guy who I think it was from the same people that did Pushing Daisies. Oh, it's awesome! So, I remember that show and the first good. the first two seasons of Pushing Daisies okay. were great. Yeah, two thousand four. Sound right? Uh, it sounds right. Okay. Yeah, Wonderfalls. Okay. Really good stuff. Carolyn right. Diverse, that sounds awesome. Kevin Finneran. William yeah. Sadler. William Sadler's great. Yeah, good cast. Lee Pace. I just hate oh, William Sadler. That was starting great. something that's that we know is good for one to two seasons, maybe three, and then I mean, wanting to stick with it. Yeah. And getting disappointed, even I actually, though I knew it was going to happen from the start. But those early good seasons, I think, would be worth it. Like I Dexter for me is like that. It doesn't bother. Like I can like let it, if a show goes bad, I can just drop off, and I just appreciate the seasons that worked. But imagine if you picked up a book and it was like yeah. amazing <laughs> and enthralling in the first third of it, and yeah. then it was just shit in the rest of it, and you had to just put it down and do that with every single book you pick up. <laughs> there was that a, would suck. There was like a there was a show on USA Network called Graceland, which had one of the greatest first seasons I've ever seen of a TV show, and two of the worst second and third seasons that I've ever seen in television history and it, it's actually almost worth like exploring how it went that bad from season one to season two because most of the writing team is the same and there's no actual explanation as to why I guess you could explain it as like maybe they had one story to tell and then decided to continue it and then mm. it just went bad right. but it's actually shocking how not good the second and third seasons are compared to such an amazing mm. first season. That's how I felt about Dexter when John Lithgow's season happened. Sure. Which is one of my favorite seasons yeah. of Dexter and, and a lot of TV. And then that head writer left, I think, at the end of that season. And that next season was trash, in my opinion. I believe that was one with Colin. The Hanks, guy, the guy who did that, that bad season has ruined like everything he's ever done. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he has a, a, a resume. He has a, he has a resume. He's, destruction. He's, he's literally left a, pa- a wake of uh, a, a path of destruction really? behind him. Yeah. What else has he done? Uh, that was the dude. He 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 did the bad season of Daredevil, I believe, <laughs> or the uh, the bad season of. Uh, I'd have to look it up. Interesting. But yeah, that guy. That guy's. Uh, that guy's he's an mess. assassin. Yeah, basically. Can can we can we briefly talk about a really bad season of uh, just like a bad first season? Mm. What well, what would you guys say is like a really bad that's a, that's first a, season that maybe got better? Game I, of Thrones for me. I didn't like. I the don't first know if I would have a list for that because usually, if I don't get like if that first season doesn't work, I don't make it past. Like, if like, a first ten minutes doesn't work, you leave. yeah. <laughs> so, like, I know, well, I know a lot of people didn't um, love the beginning of Breaking Bad. Really? And watched it and and uh, uh, and they they kind of had to 
Right. You know, like you, it, it got better and better. You right. could make the argument that the X Files is very spotty in that first season and gets very, very mm-hmm. good seasons two through five or two through because six. Because they fleshed everybody out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I love that first season. I love the bad episodes. Like I, I tend to be the person who I love the episodes that nobody else likes. Well, I'd say I, I'd just like something recent. I'd say like the Book of Boba Fett is just awful. Yeah. And it's so it's like, you know, first of all, it's fat Boba Fett. Like, you know, it's like, it's like the same, but like he comes out of the Sarlacc pit and you're like, wait a minute. That's not, that's not Boba Fett. Uh, and then he, um, he, suddenly he's like, oh, I'm going to run to town. Wait, you're a bounty hunter. Like you've, you're a bounty hunter. Now right. you're, now you're like, you're replacing Jabba the Hutt. Like, what are your qualifications to do that? Like what, why, why? And he's like, oh, I need to help these yeah. people. It's like. He's a bounty hunter. Like, does he? Why does he give a crap about right. these people? They don't. They don't care to explain they, that. No, they any. don't. No. And and I'm and I'm like, I don't believe any of this. The <laughs> following was another show that had a fantastic first season that went really off the rails in season two, and that's a show you would. Oh, probably, the Kevin Bacon. Show. Kevin Bacon. Show. Yeah, the first season. First season Great. was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh, shockingly violent for a network television show. Hmm. Like. Not gory, but done with Fox. enough atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, uh, done with done with a great amount of atmosphere, so it made the violence feel more real to you. Uh, and James Purefoy is a fantastic actor as well. Oh my and then god! When they got rid of him, it was just it was never going to be the same. No. And I actually thought that the guy who played the the bad guy in the third season, Michael Ely, played that guy was actually fine. But you would like that show because it had one of the best soundtracks you will ever hear. Is that the one with the Deftone song you're yes, talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A There's a song. lot. You of look like music. a Deftone fan. A Deftone <laughs> I do. You I do. Feel, you I feel look like, like one. I look like I, dr- I try to dress just like from Chino. the jacket. Yeah. This yeah. is this and is actually the, and the hair like the hair. I'm wearing this today because I saw a Deftones video yesterday. Oh my god! You're seeing it to my soul right now. I watched I watched a record release party of White Pony, and it was amazing. And I said, "I'm going to wear a shirt. I have one just like that." Chino, that's I'm do it. unreal. You just saw my whole my whole being. I feel seen right now. I feel like, like the exact opposite of Caleb. Maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, Sergio, bass player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he's also the bass player in Quicksand, and I love Quicksand. Quicksand like one of my band. favorites. Yes, yeah. They're amazing. That's meme. awesome. We could learn out about music. There's a great meme of somebody holding a vibrator up to a guitar and says every Deftone song ever. I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> true though. True it's though. Basically true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Duck Paints said worst thing about Prey is that it had the potential to be a really good Predator movie. That Predator bear fight scene was awesome. It's, uh, imagine doing that with that budget too, not having nearly the budget of a Revenant. Or uh, I mean, that bear was like it's not as bad as the what is it from Lord, from the Rings of Power? The the, the crappy animals and the of power? dorgs, the, aka the, orc dogs. The the orc dogs that look exactly like a, like a PlayStation called. Two. It looks like a PlayStation Two animation. They don't even have like, shadows. Yeah. <laughs> the shadows are just like weirdly. On, like black blobs that I, move across the screen. I'm, I'm ready to start out the of conspiracy sync. that that Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power is a, like a a money laundering. It's scam. a tax write off. It's, it's a money laundering. <laughs> it's a money yeah. laundering. I think we scam. have to spend all the money. I'm gonna have to the see. End of the year. I want the receipts about where that money went. <laughs> I wonder how Jeff Bezos like feels about that. Like he 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 had to. You know, I mean, he's not really technically part of Amazon anymore, right? Yeah. Like he, he kind of left that role. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm sure somebody ran it across and he's like, this is going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Here's a billion dollars. <laughs> 200, they have to spend $250 million just to get the rights from it all to, mm-hmm. to yeah. adapt a story that isn't even really a story. Yeah. Like right. It's, it's, it's got to be a money laundering That's why you're getting scam. black blobs with no shadows. Yeah. Because they don't have enough money. And it doesn't, like, j- just the production-wise, it doesn't, it doesn't feel... Like, like they the spent Lord half of the a billion Rings. dollars. Well, it, it, that it, that too, but it doesn't. It, there the there should be some off. kind of continuity, atmosphere wise. Mm-hmm. Because you have to keep cutting between the individual stories of each character that never intersect, and each one of them has their own set and their own atmosphere and vibe. So, like when you're looking at Numenor, it's all just a beige hellscape, and then I'd also like it if something happened. In the show, <laughs> well, yeah, that would be great. Like too. actual, all they do happening. is argue with each other. No action occurs, and it's all just build up, build up, build up. I'm sure we've been reviewing every episode. I'm sure it's gonna it's like something's gotta happen. They've gotta have but does some, it really? They've gotta have a <laughs> battle. Or How many episodes in are they? 
we have like three, three more left. Three left. to so, to watch so how and nothing happened? has happened yet nothing, nothing, um, literally nothing's ha- yeah. yeah and none oh, of nine. the main cast oh, wow. has intersected stories yet wow at all mm-hmm. so you're switching between like six different people an episode and you're supposed to keep track like mm-hmm. chronologically and what's happening how it's relevant to the other person right it sounds like the last episode or the the last season total of Arrested Development. Yeah, where you know every, they kind of cut like, it weirdly. And yeah, it was like it. it was like one episode is about one character, one yeah. episode is about another, and yeah. like Henry Winkler's in all of them. Right, you know, love Henry, and, but Winkler. they don't. Yes. But but they don't really like you have to. Watch I didn't the like whole, that season, but I couldn't tell no, it was why. Awful. <laughs> but then but then uh, I think they did like a recut. They kind of and and I didn't bother. I didn't like bother I was, watching. I was either. like, I don't and care. I love that show. But uh-huh. I didn't. I didn't care. I wasn't like a super fan of that show. Yeah. I I appreciated. It. I thought it was funny. Not not in my top fifty. Yeah. Favorite oh, man. funny for comedies, stuff, but it's up there for me because like mm-hmm. it was. There's so many ridiculous jokes so fast that they would be throwaways for them. But like for another show mm-hmm. or a sitcom, it would be like the sh- the joke they built to you know. But for the rest of development, it was just like that. This wonderful show you pointed out also has Jewel State from she was from Firefly. Yes, and and mm-hmm. also Neil Grayston from. Uh, uh, Eureka, which is one of my Eureka and Warehouse 13 are two of my favorite. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, sci-fi, sci-fi, or uh, USA Network. Yeah, yeah. there's same I love, umbrella. I, it's fine. I famously am like uh, I'm anti-intellectual sci-fi. I, I like the I like. You should cheese. watch Roswell. I I. Did you ever watch Roswell? I've yeah. seen it's like 90210 with yeah. aliens. Yeah. Sexy but aliens. It's, I I love the cheesier sci-fi stuff. Wait, is intellectual like the Star Trek? The next generation. I mean, I think Star Trek is definitely more heady. Yeah, I think of it as it's yeah, philosophical. Like most of the stuff that I like is f- is more focused on the on the actual characters and less on the actual. Like it's like it's literally the explanation is always because it's sci-fi. Like you can't like they don't they don't actually have to explain anything. They can be like because it's and wacky. that's great. And I'm and I'm fine with that. Like most <laughs> well, of the time, if it's done right, like, yeah, yeah, that kind of goes back. You to, probably look like a Star Trek fan. I don't. I don't really watch Star Trek. Man, all right. I don't I have you pegged. I, I was <laughs> hoping. I was like, I hope he knows me. I hope. No, no. But you, I, um, but you guys weren't into Star Trek at all. No. Nope. My grandma no. loved no, it. My and dad I'd watch it was with her. really into it. Um, okay. Still would be not the new stuff. I prefer oh, the it over new stuff Star Wars. Isn't Star Trek. I That's, prefer. I mean, just Star like Wars. the new Star Wars isn't Star Wars. They just canceled the new Star Trek movie, the Kelvin timeline yep. one. Yeah. The J.J. Abrams. Oh, actually, uh, right. I, I'm I'm looking at uh, box office. Whoa! <laughs> I'm looking at box office mojo now, and it says um, uh, untitled Star Trek sequel. It was supposed to come out in tw- the end of 2023, and it says removed. Yep. So they I guess they, uh-huh. I they guess they canceled it. it. Poor J.J. Abrams. He's just going up and yeah, up. Poor well, I don't, I don't know if he was going to direct it. He, well, it would have been Bad Robot. It would have been his production company. Yeah. Yeah, so. nah, he's fine. <laughs> he doesn't need a, He'll be another okay. Star Trek movie. <laughs> Johnny Derp said, all female sci-fi comedy, Spaceballs, that is all. <laughs> I'm down. B-A-W-L. Who's it going to be? B-A-W-L-S. <laughs> Call Me Snow Possum said, did you see Lizzo twerking and playing with that flute? No, you must be blind then. Well, we will get to that. No, I saw it, and then I went blind. <laughs> oh. Let's save him, and then Call we'll me. come back. <laughs> okay. Let's save him, we'll come back. All, all, right, right. all right. So we're going to move on. We're going to talk about uh, a survey, because uh, we were very interested. We're in data-driven. <laughs> yeah, that, that's us over here. We care about driven. the facts and that, the science. We literally had a segment there, uh, a thing the other day where we talked about how like we're, we're, we're fake news here. We're, we're up in here with pipettes, doing our experimentation. <laughs> do you want to lead this? Concocting uh, stories. Lead? Sure. <laughs> So there's this uh, one of these independent research groups called Mara, Meru Group that did a survey of about 1,500 U.S. Uh, consumers, 18 and up, and it was about how the "Don't Worry, Darling" controversies, of which there are many, shaped their reactions and and feelings and awareness of the film. And it's because we're wondering, did the controversies happen because they wanted a PR stunt or multiple that would boost them in the box office? That's what I thought. But I also thought there was a seed of truth to it all. And it was just accelerated by the media yeah. and, and egged on. Um, and they also wanted to focus more on the most obviously astroturfed aspects of it. So Spitgate, Spitgate being right. at the very top. <laughs> and um, I mean, it actually ranked them in relevance. So Harry Styles alleged spitting on Chris Pine at Don't Worry Darling premiere was the most well-known scandal surrounding the film. Mm-hmm. 68% of the uh, surveyors knew about it. Yep. 
Um, then next after that was Olivia Wilde's alleged romance on set with Harry Styles. Not which alleged. It's alleged. not alleged. It was. It just happened. Stop I, protecting this woman. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe there wasn't. Maybe there wasn't a romance on the set. Maybe no. it happened afterwards. Well, well right. Diesel words. <laughs> Right? In, yeah, I mean, come on. In no. the dressing room? We didn't, we didn't actually do it you on the there. set. You didn't see it. Okay. We actually on the set when it <laughs> happened. Um, and then next came the dispute between Olivia Wilde and Shia LaBeouf about whether he was fired from the film or whether he quit. Oh, she's a liar. Oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally. Have, one of the things that I had to come to terms with as somebody who loved her in house have just I have I I hate her now I I really don't like her. Uh, it's okay to not like. She the... comes. She's just so entitled and so yeah. unbelievably. I mean, she's so good in house, and I and I and I've seen Tron, Tron, Tron Legacy yeah. like fifty times. <laughs> yeah. she like, but that's what that's what makes it worse. Like, it, it makes it worse that you're that good at your job, but then that annoying when you try to pivot to another uh, part of the industry and blame everyone else. Yeah, uh, she's she's like the Joe Biden of Hollywood right now. She <laughs> keeps just like blame it, like nothing's her. Her fault no it's not and you know. she said that it's sexist that she's being held to account or asked to answer for all of this drama and a male director wouldn't have been asked these questions uh -huh. and her male colleagues on the film aren't asked these questions because they're not as giving if interviews chris pine and harry it. styles aren't aren't <laughs> being asked about this by the way um they or can't like, ask them because they're like we don't want to go promote your movie it's stupid like <laughs> Chris right, Pine Florence Pugh is Florence Pugh. It feels the same way. Clearly, yeah, they all are sick of each other. Probably, if She's there's like, a seed I, of truth to any of this, it's that they don't get along. At least she, at least Florence has uh, Dune as a good excuse. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not available because I'm doing this. It's a like, believable I'm doing one. a real movie. Planes yeah. don't <laughs> exist. I can't fly from there to here to promote this movie. No, I, I want to point out that this is actually, if there was, uh, weirdly enough, as much as I don't like her. If Hollywood's looking for a model of controversy to follow to promote your movie, I would much rather they did this than the your fans are racist and sexist model that they're using because right people, now. Because people people loved this controversy or stack of controversies because none of it had any stakes. And there's no good, Not, clear good guy or bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there is a clear bad guy in the mind of like anyone who yes. is not infected with the social justice obsession yeah um because i think it's morally despicable that olivia wilde would lie about shia labeouf being fired from the film yeah. right. when in reality she begged for him to stay on the ca on their cast i think that's morally despicable i think it's despicable that she would cast her boyfriend to play the husband of an actress on her set that she already disliked yeah and then watching them simulate intercourse on camera and directing those scenes clearly made her dislike Florence Pugh even more. <laughs> All like, of it is extremely sordid I like to idea. any normal person's moral compass. I, like I mean, and doesn't she has two kids with Jason Sudeikis, right? Yes. I mean, she has and, no And her child also was on set because she the has, child mm, was in the movie. She has no moral high ground no. at, on, on anything. I mean, just, just the fact that... And I, <laughs> this was and how was, her daughter met her new stepdad, yeah. basically. And and you know what's funny? I, I knew yeah. I, I knew from the beginning that that relationship was doomed anyway because like well first I, not nothing against Jason Sudeikis <laughs> but like she is just way too hot for him yeah so, it's the same it's the but same but sometimes thing. if there's not like a money or power imbalance then or if there is there would one, be a, yeah if he had more money than her then, then that it would make would be, sense but then he, it would make sense but, but they're like, both but like look at, look at Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston yeah. like when that happened at the beginning people were like no no. It's not like she is he is too pretty for her. Really? And yes. Oh yeah. Because Jennifer kidding? Aniston mm. was a smoke show mm. in not, not the next 90s. to not next to Angelina Jolie as yeah. soon as you she, she was a one uh, Mr. Angelina Mrs. Jolie Smith. was a one of a kind. I also want to point out I would I love the idea that like when they got home from set, she's like, You were looking like you're having a little too much fun there with Florence, huh? <laughs> like, oh, you were really into that to that scene today, well, Harry. At the, but at the time, wasn't she with uh, uh, Garden State? Director of uh, Scrubs, uh, Zach Braff. Yeah, didn't they oh, break? Know. Didn't they just break up recently? No, I'm saying I like the idea that Olivia Wilde, who's directing the scene, is then yelling at Harry Styles. Oh, really? Oh, I thought she was when they yeah, scolding home. him. Yeah. For oh, you uh, look obeying her when she is directing yeah. the scene. I like that's the idea like that, that she's like, having sex with Florence Pugh. She's why? 
why is Olivia Wilde doing this to me? Because I liked her. <laughs> yes, I liked her. That's and, what I'm and I liked Book Smart, and I thought it was. If Florence you're Pugh probably I'm, had exactly the same thought. Why <laughs> is probably, Olivia Wilde doing this yeah. to me? Do you think that? Do you think like she ever like hit him back? Like like she like Harry Styles <laughs> says something that pisses her off, and she's like, "Look, I was directing that scene, and you are not that good of an actor." Mm. Mm-hmm. Like just just digging into him because she uh, she's in a bad mood one day. And she just, seems like a person who would and, do that. And Harry Styles doesn't look like the kind of guy that's going to be like. He likes back. acting no. because you're playing <laughs> pretend. He's not the man in that relationship. Um, let's let's he's be definitely real. Gonna, he's gonna hang his. He's head not and say, the I'm man sorry. in any relationship. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and I think that this survey actually uh, it, it sort of played into some fake news about about this film because one of the reasons they they gave as a controversy was Florence Pugh being upset about the alleged romance enough to not want to promote the film. That was not why Florence Pugh didn't want to promote the film. In fact, that's like one of many alleged reasons. But firstly, she didn't want to be co-stars with Shia LaBeouf because Shia LaBeouf had just been hit with a sexual battery case from FKA Twigs and he was under a lot of scrutiny and she didn't want to be associated with that. Or maybe she had a personal issue with him. As he admitted himself, he was extremely egotistical at the time and just wasn't he didn't have functional relationships so maybe he was difficult to work with that's that's a valid reason to not want to be on set with him that was why Shia LaBeouf left then Florence Pugh had a tense relationship with Olivia Wilde over that because Olivia Wilde only casted Florence Pugh because she was younger yeah she wanted a younger person to play Alice because it was originally supposed to be Olivia Wilde that played that role. Yes, yeah. Olivia yeah. Wilde was originally going to play Alice. Twenty nine percent said that they that this made the people more 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 interested in seeing the movie. Well, so it, that's a lot. That's well, a lot. Well, there's the other one. It says uh, Olivia Wilde. Uh, sixty sixty one percent of people had heard about the Olivia Wilde being served custody papers on stage mm-hmm. uh, at CinemaCon, mm-hmm. and that's the that was the very first time that I'd heard about the movie. Mm. Uh, Me too. And and, and I, I immediately, I remember I saw that, and immediately I, I went to YouTube and looked for a trailer, which didn't exist at the time. Huh. But but it, it definitely, I, re, I definitely the controversy yeah. helped, helped because this 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 is not like a a fifty million dollar movie. No, and it's not from an existing IP either. Right, it's supposed to be a little bit more. Avant-garde. Avant-garde, yeah. yeah. And I bet she probably made, she's like, I'm going to get all these big stars. I'm going to get Harry Styles. I'm going to get all these people. And then I'm going to, they're, they're going to give me the next Wonder Woman or the next uh, Captain Marvel movie to direct. Because no. now you Harry know. Styles is in the MCU, right? This, I mean, we saw what happened one of the when Elizabeth. Is he, really? Yeah. Uh, of course. If he is. Elizabeth <laughs> Banks can't transition from Pitch Perfect to uh, Charlie's Angels, then I refuse to believe that Olivia Wilde can transition from this to uh, any type of like big budget franchise. Nope. Batgirl. See it. No. <laughs> there was a larger portion of the um, of the respondents that said that it had not impacted interest level, but. I wish that it had asked, like, how interested were, were you, you yes. at the beginning of this? Because when I think about it, no, it didn't impact my interest level at all. Uh, I didn't have intentions of seeing it before. I didn't have intentions of it after. I had no interest. Therefore, my interest level was not impacted. 42%. This is a that. weird one. This is a weird one. Uh, impact of controversies on Olivia Wilde perception. Have the controversy surrounding the film changed your perception of Olivia Wilde as an actor and or director? Uh, 61% said no. I imagine, <laughs> like, is that just the people who are like, it's all fake anyways, whatever. Like, or is that people who actually like are that steadfast in their belief like, of either liking or, or hating her? Yeah, like, 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 and, and, and uh, it says 13% are not sure. So, you know, only 20%. 26% said yes. I kind of so. like the idea that there's people that are so indecisive that <laughs> oh, like I don't e- know. I don't, even on I something with that low stakes, they can't even come up with an answer. An anonymous you know, like, <laughs> pop culture survey. <laughs> like uh, that that's me in a nutshell. Like oh, half the time, that's me know. in a nutshell. Yeah. Somebody gives me a Twitter survey. It's like, if I don't get like a, I'm not sure, I'm not answering. Like my oh. wife's in the room. I don't want to answer <laughs> that question. But you, you get too curious and you want to see the results. Yes, yeah, so you hit so. something yeah. anyways. Yeah. That probably yes, impacts a lot of exactly. the outcomes of Twitter surveys, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Um, So one of the most interesting and disheartening is this question. 
is the criticism of Olivia Wilde sexist because she's being criticized for behavior male film directors have indulged in with little backlash in the past, specifically about her relationship with her subordinate? Yes, 42%. Insane. Insane, almost dude. half. But that may, the, the question makes no sense. It's like, okay, she, 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 there was sexist behavior. So are you criticizing her sexist behavior because she's a woman? Mm. What are was her kidding? sexist behavior? But, uh, whatever it is, but it's like no, if it was a man. No, they're you criticizing her The is criticism sexist. she's facing is sexist because they're male asking, film directors would not have received the same criticisms. That's not so true. the idea is like any criticism is any criticism of her behavior sexist but if, at all. But if she has bad behavior, right? That's just and, criticism. And beyond gender. But, but, if it, but if it's a male director, like if it's uh, Josh Whedon, mm -hmm. you know, like they're not attacking him for being a man. They're attacking him for being a jerk, yeah. Yeah. right? Like, you know, with, well, they're talking with the about a double thing. standard. Well, actually, I think there's did, a there double is, standard there is being no employed against There is no double standard. That's, the, that's That the did problem. happen with Joss Whedon, too. Remember? Yes, it with, did. Uh, with, with Cyborg. When all that stuff came out, uh, and then they're like, the, a bunch of stuff came out about him working on Buffy, and they're like... Uh, with James uh, James Masters, right? Yeah, yeah. and they're, they're like, he's like, well, all these women wanted to sleep with me. What was I supposed to do? Like, of course. <laughs> these, la these ladies wouldn't have never looked so at me. So naive. Yeah, I was like, I, was like I, I can't even blame him. Like, he wasn't doing anything. I mean, I mean, you could say that he was doing something wrong, but should he have been sleeping with women that were, like, looking to get roles from him? Maybe, maybe not. But they both made their decision. They had consensual yeah, sex. Yeah, it's not like, illegal. That's not illegal. Like, I was like, I don't give a crap if he does that. If the, if the lady wants to do that and take her shot, the, you know, having sex with Joss Whedon to see if she can get a bit part on on freaking Dollhouse, then I don't care. I mean, if that's the life you want to choose, that's like, a, go for uh, it. That's your choice. As long as you own your actions, that's fine. But, but usually they don't. But yeah, I know, that's, <laughs> that's the part that you know always ends up Adam bothering Levine. me. Yeah, Adam Levine. But it's like, uh, <laughs> if, if it's bad when Joss Whedon does it by the media, then why is she not uh, capable of the same criticism? Exactly. And, and, why, and why is the criticism like, well, you know, if she wasn't a woman, she would, you know, yeah. people would be... Uh, a little easier on her like that's that just no that doesn't fly i don't care if she if she if she slept with him i i do care that she's annoying uh, her annoyingness is the worst part i don't care who she sleeps with i care well, that it's she mainly that olivia wilde would probably join the dog pile yeah. if a male film director were called out for dating a subordinate yeah. on his cast right but she wants to have the power to do the same thing because girl bossery yes trumps all and uh not to mention he's like way younger than her so it's, it's not way younger but like 10 enough, years enough. 10, 10 years. years cougar bossery it's even it's, it's even different <laughs> i hate the shift to like yeah like cougars yep. recently with uh hollywood like I don't know. They're I'm, all they're all trying to leave. But we're into still going to get all the articles about how older women in Hollywood don't get any work, and they're going to make you feel bad for thinking that older women uh, don't. Well, don't she get got any work because she gave herself work. Yeah. Have you seen the videos of of Olivia Wilde getting trashed uh, by fans because, like, you know, Harry? She's at the Harry Styles concert and she's dancing and she looks like a boomer. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's it's very like uh, it's like Yikes. it's kind of reminded me of Elaine dancing in in Seinfeld. <laughs> And you th and you think, come on, like Olivia Wilde, why are you doing this to me? Like uh, you're you're ruining all of our perceptions of like this hot girl, and then she has to like not dance well. Stay home, don't dance. <laughs> Ew. I didn't know. Go Wilde, home, Grandma. I don't dance, darling. I didn't know Wilde wasn't her real don't last dance name. What's her real last name? Cockburn. You're kidding. Wait. Everyone got really quiet real quick. What Olivia Cockburn. Olivia Cockburn. I would have gone yeah. by. Uh, she should have just gone by that's that. Awful. That's awful. That's what her name is. So yeah. <laughs> but probably accurate. Yeah, exactly. That's why she changed it to, to oh, be like wow. a spy. So <laughs> <laughs> to me, it is shocking that it uh, like 29% actually made this people want to go see this movie more. Like it literally zapped all our interest. Watching from, the trailer even, yeah. it's just mind numbingly boring. I mean, it, it it's looks, supposed to be it looks like cool. Like no, it video. doesn't. <laughs> no, no it think, doesn't. Think, it's like, ooh, think, look at our subversive commentary on gender dynamics in the fifties, and and it's in the fifties, so it's really dark. It looks well shot, though. It looks it uh, looks like an art film. It looks like it looks like what enough. it's supposed to look like. I'm looking at her Wikipedia page. I've seen nothing with her ever. Like I have not. I have no connection to this person whatsoever. I never saw a house. Never I'm saw. Sorry, I know you love that show. That's your. That's your. That's I never your saw the. Neutron, uh, which is ten years old, t twelve years old at this point, but I'm glad. I'm gonna. It's gonna say that way. You should watch House. 
You should. I should. I know. I know. You love it so it's, much. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of seasons. You don't have to. I mean, you can watch up through five. I'll just watch the episodes with her. Is she in every episode? Well, no, no she well, doesn't start till season four. Oh, perfect. Yeah, like you're, you're barely going to see her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. The Jennifer Morrison is the main girl in the first three seasons, but she's uh, that show's great. It's, I mean, it's a lot of it's yeah. a lot of seasons, and it's a network show, so you're not getting eight to sixteen episode seasons. You're getting twenty two episode seasons that you have to then <laughs> yeah, <that's crazy. laughs> sit through. So, uh, I think it's time for let's super go. chats. Call me Snow Possum said, I can't get past Rita's death in Dexter. I've mm. tried to rewatch it and can't get over it. Uh. So everything after that I haven't seen. So I've I've never owned a TV, as I say, all this all this time. My parents had one and I would drive from my apartment like a forty minute drive to watch Dexter on Sunday nights. <laughs> That's amazing. And I used to uh I remember driving home after Rita's death, that entire forty minute drive just going, Rita. <laughs> like I just repeated her name, Rita. That I was, actress. I is, was blown away. That, that actress is one of my favorite actresses working today. Julie. Uh, um, what else is she in? Julie she Benz. was phenomenal in Dexter. She was yeah. in the. She was in the comeback Rambo movie. Yep. Uh, yeah. And she was Julie also. Benz, yeah. hmm. She was also in um, the the short lived uh, Training Day TV show that they tried to do, but then Bill Paxton died. Oh. Uh, uh, I met Bill Paxton. Did you? I met Bill Paxton. He was Sick. the nice. He, I, he looks like he would be like the nicest guy. Like, I've met I've met a decent amount of celebrities e- be, even before my burgeoning YouTube career. Uh, and Bill Paxton was the single nicest celebrity I've ever met. That's well, awesome. Uh, how I, did you I meet like him? How did you meet him? Uh, I he uh, it was at a he was doing an interview uh, at a place, and I was there on you know on staff with a bunch of people and. And uh, and I, I was like, hey, Bill, you know, to some of my coworkers, I'm like, hey, Bill Paxton is here, and they, they ran up, and everybody had a thing that they loved about him. It was he was either uh, the HBO mm-hmm. series or Fish Heads, like he directed the the, the oh. music video for Fish Heads or or Terminator mm-hmm. or uh, or Aliens, like yeah. every, and he and he indulged everybody. He took pictures with everybody. Like he he could have rushed off, and he just and he just hung around. And he was the nice. He was the nicest guy. Hmm. And when he died, it, which was very just like that, yep. I, I, I don't get sad about celebrities dying. I was, I was pretty. I was. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, yeah, real, real bummer. But super, super nice guy. It's good. It's good hearing. Yeah, I think that era of Hollywood's kind of dying. They feel more like for as as open as they try to be now, it feels like they're not as actually genuine. Like the ones I, well, that, like I, I also met Jeremy Irons. Mm-hmm. He was a dick. <laughs> really? not, well, that's something you would expect, uh, right? Uh, He's just it, aggressively that kills me, that kills British. Me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> leans like, into it very heavily. Like, like I'd be more surprised if, like, uh, what's his name, um, Kane from uh, from Batman. Oh, um, Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's too old to be mean, right? He's he's got to be a nice guy. I imagine Michael. There's Caine no such be, thing as too old to be mean. I, I imagine Michael. Caine, yeah, but yeah. I imagine <laughs> Michael Caine to be like busy, like you know, like oh, oh hello, nice to meet you, bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. working all the time. I met uh, you. Brought up William Sadler yeah. earlier. I met him when I worked. I was a furniture mover in an auction gallery, and uh, I just know him. I, I know him from a lot of things, but I know him mostly from as being Death, the Grim Reaper. Yes, right. From so when he walked dead. in, I was like. Oh, and I was like blown away. And I, at the time, I was like running a showroom, so I had to give paintings to people. He was an art buyer and stuff like that. And he wanted a painting all the way up on top of the ceiling. And I had to get a ladder for him. And in my head, I'm just calling him death the whole yeah. time. And he walks over. He sees me like struggling <laughs> on a ladder. He holds the ladder, looks up at me and goes, wouldn't want you to die. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knew from the way you were looking at have. him. He must right? have. It was oh, amazing. That's he's great. Amazing. Yeah. He's like one of those journeyman actors that's literally in every series you've ever yeah. seen. In, in their, for one episode, he's in every series you've and ever seen. In your entire, he's like Brett Cullen. Brett Cullen's another one of those actors who's like, he's just tall. Uh, like good-looking middle-aged dude, so they just get cast as tall, good-looking middle-aged dude in at least one series of every network television show that's ever been made ever. I don't think I know that one. Hmm. That show? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Center conservative mom ninety-eight said, "Last Kingdom had a met first season, but now I'm in season four and I'm addicted to it. Watching stuff all the way through is the only way to know, I guess." 
I, I, I don't like if they it's can't a lot of time. Me, if they can't hook me in that first season, they don't they don't get me. If they can't hook me in that first ten minutes, they don't get me. I just my Dang. attention my attention span is too short and life is too short. Well, that's what happened with me for the first episode of Breaking Bad because it it, it, it there was something about it that just did not hook me. Yeah. And then like by season two or three, people were like, "You have to watch a show." Right. And I'm like, well, I try and they're like, "No, no, no." You need to like start watching it again. It gets better. I tried the first episode of Game of Thrones multiple times, and I just didn't care at yeah. all. And same, then eventually, same. it really got. Same. I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is amazing!" And then like that last season's a joke, but seasons like the last two seasons, or you know, before the last season with like the Battle of the Bastards, that mm -hmm. whole I was like, "This is the best TV ever." But it was sandwiched between two terrible seasons. I mean, it's crazy that this golden age of of TV, like that's. The, out of all the great shows, like how did Game of Thrones? Like we kind of know how, but I mean, just the fact that that season, a, uh, a, a shortened season, mm -hmm. those showrunners were were clearly distracted by other projects. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we're gonna do Star Wars, yeah, you know? Let's so get this over with. yeah, let's get <laughs> the hell out of here. Uh, but it's you know when you when you compare Breaking Bad, which ended pretty great. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it could have ended better, you know, mm -hmm. like the hill the hillbilly. Right. Guys, I didn't, you know, like, I didn't ever. I, people keep telling oh, me it's okay. great, but I, I do want to watch it. But Mad Men, did you watch Mad Men? I loved Mad Men. Yeah, Mad Men ended pretty great. There's I like say like the last I liked season. It. Yeah, Better but, Call Saul is being considered better than Breaking Bad now. I, I all, that's all I hear. I yeah. we were talking about I've that not, last yeah, night. I've not seen it, but I'm. I, I mean, like it's it's got endless praise. Well, and you I'm, need to you need to watch yeah. all of Breaking Bad yeah. before like the, then then Better Call Saul. Is more revenue. It has more. Yeah, I, I think you could. I think it could probably stand alone, but I think it's 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 better within that context mm -hmm. if you see it. Mm -hmm. I almost like when shows end like because of being canceled unexpectedly. No. So what? that no. Yeah. So they can't mess up the ending. I mean, maybe there's yeah. something to be that. It's oh, like also, it's saved from its own yes. bad decisions. My <laughs> one of my favorite sitcoms ever is The Grinder. Do you know what it? The Grinder is? No. Mm -hmm. no. It's Rob Lowe. <laughs> Rob Lowe is a, a TV lawyer. He has a, he has a, a hit sitcom within the sitcom, or a hit drama within yeah. the sitcom. Huge. He quits suddenly, and the show ends up, you know, cance you know being canceled. Mm. So he moves back to, like, Indiana. His brother is Fred Savage. No, oh, weird. And Fred Savage is a real lawyer, but he's not, like, the charismatic TV-type lawyer that Rob Lowe is. Yeah. So Rob Lowe is like, hey, I want to work for your law firm. Well, <laughs> you're not a lawyer. That's okay. I'll take the bar. You know, like That's a really interesting premise, actually. And oh, and, and the, the wife of Fred Savage is um, uh, the, the waitress from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, yep. And she's great. Like they it. But that season and it's 24. It's 24 episodes. Every single episode is perfect. It's so funny. And, and they have. Fred Savage and the wife, they have kids. The kids are funny, too. Like it's There must be a, a fair age gap between Fred Savage and Rob Lowe, right? I mean, they, like, Rob Lowe's going to be in no, the Fred Savage is probably no. older than you think, dude. I Fred think Savage, Fred Savage is one but of those but it, I mean, he look, First of all, he looks eternally yeah. young. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. He still looks like he do, did in Wayne's World. He basically uh, still He's 46. Like, Fred Savage is? Yeah, and Rob Lowe's, what, like 120? <laughs> <laughs> but great show. But, it, but as far as... Uh, they didn't do a second season; it got canceled. Mm. Uh, but when you know you're, what you're saying about a show just ending, but it didn't end on a bad note, yeah. right? And you feel like, well, could it actually get better mm -hmm. than this? Because At least it was I so could great. speculate about it. Yeah. yeah, like I would Instead. hope that it would be better, but maybe mm -hmm. then they would bring writers on who are. It's like with Family Guy. Family Guy gets canceled, and people are like, Family Guy was really great; it was underrated. And then when they brought in you know they said we're restarting it they just brought in fans of family guy and it was never as great mm -hmm. you know yeah. as the first couple seasons so uh who knows what would things happen need with to the end grinder. did anyone watch yeah. carnival the hbo show mm, no. i love that show that was two seasons and it ended abruptly and i like having my imagination to be like i they're not going to ruin this and i hope yeah. they don't bring it back and, and actually oh wait ruin i thought it. they did though didn't they do like a carnival movie or oh something God, i don't know don't tell oh, me oh no don't tell him don't tell him. I'm, I'm googling <laughs> keep it, it keep now keep him in the dark no <laughs> might have actually speaking of family guy we're going to move on actually <laughs> okay oh, oh, speaking of family guy we are nice. going to we are going to amazing segue, segue. Thank you. Thank nice. you. so this uh this says chloe grace moretz slams horrific family guy meme <laughs> mocking her body <laughs> 
and says it contributed to body dysmorphia and I became a recluse, which, um, it's the internet. Okay, but. I know. No one's safe, Mary. <laughs> You're, are you just going to. Yes. To say, like, what is cyberbullying? Close your laptop. <laughs> I, I, I made the opposite argument uh. earlier. I made the opposite argument earlier about kids in school. I said, look, when you're if you're a kid in school and people are cyberbullying you, you can't just get away from it because you have eventually see those people at school and you can't actually escape that realm. It's hard because she started acting as a child too and like wasn't able to have a private life. So, so it says, Chloe Grace Moretz spoke bluntly to Hunger Magazine about becoming a recluse after her body dysmorphia was exacerbated by horrific memes on social media, most notably one meme comparing her body to a Family Guy character. Horrific is, is a bit of an overstatement yes, of it. a little bit. So basically they would just Photoshop pictures of her from the paparazzi only slightly so that it was like believable but so that her body looked weird. She's she's 5'4", and she has she's like pretty leggy for her height. So a lot of people made fun of how long her legs are and compared her to this, this There's Family the, Guy character. Yeah, if you're watching, it, it's on the screen it now. It sounds like they did that in Family Guy to make fun of her. Is, yes. And, and that's even worse than if that had just been Family Guy and people just compared her to it, right? I think this one is actually my favorite of the Where they edit her to be like a muscular yes. short man. I, that one. That For those one, listening, I, I'm I helping really, out with the visuals. I really do think she looks like Elizabeth Olsen in some of these pictures. Um, I didn't think that. I, I, mm. I, 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 don't I see know. this picture here. She looks like Elizabeth Olsen, but I think it's the shape so of her head. So in this interview, she said, I've actually never really talked about this, but there was one meme that really affected me of me walking into a hotel with a pizza box in my hand. And this photo got manipulated into a character from Family Guy <laughs> with the long legs and the short torso. But not even just that. It, it was the one of the most widespread memes at the time. Everyone was making fun of my body and I brought it up with someone and they were like, oh, shut the F up. It's funny. And I just remember sitting there and thinking, my body is being used as a joke and it's something that I can't change about who I am. And it's being posted all over Instagram. It was something so benign as walking into a hotel with leftovers. And to this day, when I see that meme, it's something very hard for me to overcome. Look, you make yourself a public figure. You take the money that comes with becoming a public figure. Uh, it's like they talk about in publishing. You have to have thick skin to become a to get in the publishing game because you're going to be torn to shreds either by the people that are editing your books or the people that are reviewing your books. I'm not saying that it's not mean to make these memes about her. I'm saying that you're financially compensated. You did not have to continue in this industry. I know that's somewhat heartless. I'm not saying that I don't understand the discomfort that comes from it. I don't like the fact that she said everybody has body dysmorphia because that's objectively <laughs> not true. Uh, it shows that you're like insulated with the other celebrities who have yeah. to be image obsessed. Yes. And that has got to be difficult. But also, if you're a celebrity, you can pass off your social media to somebody else. Yes. I, um, I, I just fall into the camp of uh, you didn't choose this life when you were younger, but you're continuing to choose this life now. Uh, I don't have the, the uh, a ton of sympathy. But I don't know how, how somebody can say, oh, they're making fun of my body when that's literally they're not your body. They're making fun of a photoshopped version of it. Well, mm -hmm. the thing is they're taking something that is objectively unusual about her appearance, which is that she's she has really long legs and they're exa they're exaggerating it to make fun of her. And for also what like, she look, does really look like. And look what she was wearing. She right? doesn't dress right for yeah, it. Yeah, like that's true. like she's basically saying, "Hey, look at my super long legs," you know. So, yeah, which like could <laughs> be nice a legs. good thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are tourists. So they are they are making fun of how she actually looks. It's right. funny because there's tourists in every city lining up at like a caricaturist to be to have that kind of meme done of them. <laughs> like my grandparents had Thank their you. caricatures hanging in their bedroom and they look ridiculous. But yeah. like the caricaturist so takes Brett, the worst part. Like you were saying that if you had a meme like this made of you and I may, I joked about how like what if you got Photoshop so your shirt was way longer than it is even and it was like it is. If touching the floor even, even you were that, saying that the best way to respond is to lean into it lean and into it. You make yourself it. in on the joke you take the how power, would she have done that uh, repost it 
Mm. Repost it with a like, laughing face. Like, this is hilarious. Emotion. Would that yes. have taken the power away from it so that it yeah. died down sooner? I, oh, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. 120%. Uh-huh. Yes. You'd win. Okay. Absolutely. Because then it shows that that was intentionally to, trying to, like, get her goat. Provoke. Provoke. You know? You know? It's like, the best thing you can do is either not respond... Because the well, second that's kind of what she did. Yeah, she but, only responded later. Um, not then. Then she made the right choice in the time. The problem is at a, at a level of celebrity that she's at, it's going to go on a lot longer than an average person being kind yeah. of trolled online. But if you lean into it and you uh, pretend like it doesn't bother you, even if it does, you're going to take a lot of the, the people that are looking to get a rise out of you. Don't want you to be happy with it. They want you angry. So the, yeah. the second that you lean into it and you, you put up the facade that you're okay with it, you take away so much of the power that they are, that they are given. And that's power that I believe that they have every right to, to have given that you've made yourself part of the public eye. Like if she just posted it with a caption that said, OMG, can't stop laughing, yes. mm-hmm. that's it. It would have been, it would have been over that. in a week. Exactly. Yeah, but, yeah, but well, the it's, fact it's now... It's difficult now- to, to tell because if she got angry, yes, they would remember her anger but she, that didn't happen and i every time i am reminded of her existence i think of this meme no, even but, though she never responded but she's responding now yeah and now it just makes me want to post the meme and now they're posting it again <laughs> more and more. i never saw it this is a bit of an today, evergreen actually. meme i've seen it huh. come back up like over the years never seen it until over today. and over yes, because so they, they are always just photoshopping new pictures of her <laughs> Woo! Yes, thank All right. you. Well, you got a strip now what homie what is happening <laughs> Everyone's got a strip. I want to be this for Halloween. You, we should. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, I don't have the legs for it, but maybe, maybe you do. Oh I, yeah. I, oh yeah. I definitely think? do. <laughs> like, uh, I got like, the dress like, too. To me, it's just like I love that Family Guy gave her the heels, Jeez. but not the right heels. Yeah. No, it's hilarious. I mean, I feel, but I'm also not defending like the people who go out of their way to say I'm stupid, defending, mean stuff. I'm though. kind of defending Like, cause it's ridiculous. Thank you. What <laughs> on earth? I'm, I'm kind of defending happening? them. It's their right. We're rich. Oh my We're goodness. We're rich as astronauts. Yeah, take this home with you for sure. <laughs> I'm kind of defending them. It's their right to do that. It it's is their right. Yes, it's their right to it's do that. Right. I'm not saying it's I'm just it's saying not. it's it's ridiculous to go out of your way to do it. I but it's also funny. If anything, we should be a little bit more ruthless to celebrities these days. I don't want to play you. devil's advocate this whole time. I think that tabloids, like print tabloids, were really powerful back in the day because yeah. it meant that it was the media's job to be nasty to celebrities and you just had to sit back and watch and that was fun. But now uh, the, boring, the tabloidy no. stuff has been put into into your hands where if you want to be nasty to a celebrity and make jokes at their expense, then that's on you and then the media is going to shame you for it It, the whole the whole structure has changed Mm -hmm. but like if you if you were paying attention to pop culture in the 2000s like i know you guys know this better than i do they were terrible to celebrities Mm -hmm. they still kind of are but like it's it's kind of difficult to even explain how ruthless they were Especially well, about body image stuff. The media is definitely a lot less. Ima- like, mean remember in two thousand seven when side. Britney made her comeback performance? Uh, I forget which which award show it was, but Britney made a comeback performance after she had like dyed her hair mm-hmm. brown, and um, it was what was that song? Piece of me, yeah. piece of me, and. Uh, everyone tore her apart in the media because she had gained weight and if you look at her now you would be like what the f like that is not even close to fat that is not even close to chubby for our standards today but like even if a celebrity had gained weight today it would not even be mentioned. Like it's not even the media apparatus that's is on not their true. side. Well, what, what, the media we'll be, apparatus yeah, would be celebrating will, that now, the will, but well, back okay, then they would be tearing her apart. Well, first of all, you know, you had uh, like Perez Hilton. Yeah. Yes. Who, I mean, his job was just like destroying everybody. Which, right? like, why do you think Chris Crocker got so emotional and made that video? 
Like, because the right. media was personally attacking Britney Spears. It used to be that in the a media, very ruthless fashion. That the media attacked the celebrities on behalf of the people uh, in a weird way because they know that that's what everybody's thinking, even if uh, even if they're not saying, if, even if they didn't have a way to say it. Now the people, it's democratized. The people yeah. can make fun of them themselves, and the media has been turned into an apparatus to defend the celebrities yeah. by telling those normies that they're bad people. For and it's all just less fun. Or, like, say, when. Adele lost a bunch of weight yeah. right. mm-hmm. and then everybody on on Twitter was How dare like, you? was was like oh my god you know like she's fat shaming or whatever <laughs> and so the media basically they said they they weren't criticizing they were saying Twitter is criticizing mm-hmm. so they would they were still able mm-hmm. to do and the here's story all the tweets. and they yeah. were basically saying she's getting blasted for doing this as opposed to saying Rebel Wilson look what too. she oh, yeah. that was yeah. the less cool one anyways yeah. the cool one that when one. she got the the cornrows and wore the Brazilian uh, <laughs> uh, bathing right, suit and then right. they were like now you're you're not just fat shaming you're cultural appropriating now <laughs> like it but the but the the Rebel Wilson thing was supposed to be special because then she came out and was like, oh, yeah. I'm with ladies." That but then it was like, me. "I got extorted by the the Australian <laughs> meat so was it the Sydney Herald." <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was guy, an interesting. That story. Guy but what about what, apologize? But what happened? Yeah, that, the guy that journalist had to publicly apologize, for doing even his though job. he did not extort. Wow. He literally just asked for comment because he's like, "I'm going to." Someone go. submitted these photos to him. But what happened? What happened to the whole? Oh, you need to live your authentic life, yeah. right? And and then you're you're still hiding. Mm-hmm. You know, like who who cares if you want to be with women, be with women, whatever, yeah. right? Like, why is this like? Oh, it's extortion. Yeah, <laughs> like they were they were gonna they were gonna say the stories. You know, like who cares? I, like nobody's like, wow, you're a terrible person now. Let, like, let's read this this other quote. It says <laughs> Moretz explained that she was kind of sad after the meme went viral because it took a layer of something that I used to enjoy, which was getting dressed up and going to a carpet and taking a photo and making me super self conscious. And I think that body dysmorphia, which we all deal with in this world, <laughs> is extrapolated by the issues of social media. I agree that social media makes body conscious, makes you more body conscious, and causes problems there. You are a famous person. You cannot okay. allow this stuff to bother what you that she's, much. I think she meant we as in a royal we of the entertainment industry and celebrities who walk carpets. And in this world, she meant the entertainment world. I think that is what she might have meant. That's by a generous that. interpretation. Because if she's, if, <laughs> I hope so. If I, she's I saying so. that about the entire globe, that is <laughs> bizarre because... Uh, a lot of people don't even have smartphones. Perhaps yes, she means in this world that the right. world she's right. in. But then that's then that's a tacit weird admission that you're saying literally everyone in your industry. But that is, is I mean, that would be very close to to accurate because we were recently talking about Ozempic, the yes. miracle weight loss drug, the injection that celebrities have been taking recently to lose weight, made mm. for pre diabetics. It represses your insulin secretion so that you are satiated by food for longer. Oh, send me a link to that. I want to. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, it's actually on back order until January. So you're wow. going to be shit out of luck. Nuts. <laughs> but we were recently talking about that. Um, and I like I wouldn't say it's inaccurate that like all of the entertainment world is affected by this body image, uh, I guess, it, it's a dis- disconnection between yourself and what you look like. I'm sure that if we had to walk carpets and see, or like if we had paparazzi following us around and see what we look like in a candid view, it would kind of, yeah, it would be a head F, like she said. Well, it's like, do you remember uh, when Beyonce did the Super Bowl? Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, there, a whole bunch of photos came out that were essentially outtakes. So when Beyonce, like she looked like she was in a weird position or like her eyes looked weird or something, they weren't like the pictures that you were going to like. These are like the the top 50 photos. Like these are the ones that just make her look bad and they're funny and I'm going to post them anyway. Yeah. And uh, and and this photographer got slammed and Beyonce like suddenly she was just like, okay, only certain people can shoot me now, whatever. But I mean, that I think that was like the biggest uh, it's. I guess it's it's not sabotage. It's um, just malfeasance, you know, against somebody. And the same thing with with paparazzi shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, You're giving I mean, them a lot of power. Yeah, you like 
think about it like if you want to if you have a thought and you don't want somebody to push back on it don't post it on social media you don't if you believe something wholeheartedly and you don't want to have anybody push back on what you have to say then don't say it if you want to believe what you want to believe about your body and you don't want anyone to have any opinion about what you look like then don't make yourself a public figure but and then but so, she didn't make herself a public figure i she started acting when she was like 10 well, somebody made her a public figure, yeah. and then, then she continued to do it. You, yeah, so she, like, in this other article I found from when she was, like, 21, which was, like, four years ago or so, uh, she recalled that when she was 16, she was forced to wear a push-up bra for a role, and it made her consider getting cosmetic surgery. She said, those little things were insidious. Even though you can brush them off, you still internalize them. They make you question yourself and think, well, maybe I am unhappy with the size of my breasts. I've had to look at Hollywood my whole life. The people I've been comparing myself to are people who are not real. But wouldn't she know that she's 16 and, you know, hasn't like... She wouldn't know that because she was 16, you know? Like, I, <laughs> I, I sympathize with that. At least. Yeah. I don't think that's a unique thing just to Hollywood. That's just like. And whoever was everywhere. forcing her to I wear a push up bra when she was 16 I, I is do, a pedo. I actually do think a lot of people <laughs> have these types of problems and maybe don't talk about it. I mean, I had a lot of this issues. I feel like uh, growing up just I never felt comfortable being a human being <laughs> like uh, <laughs> probably one of the reasons I covered myself in tattoos. I was like, you know, I'll just I'll just uh, erase the humanity. So I feel like I understand what she's saying, but I also feel like if you're out there in the public. It's going to come at you, but it's also going to hurt her. I can't, you can't say it's, she can't be hurt because I feel like it's impossible to turn it off, but you could try to own it. Like you also said, I didn't say she couldn't be hurt. Well, I thought you said like, if you're in the public domain, then you kind of have to just expect it. Yes. And, but like, yeah, no, you're right. You're I'm right. not saying it will right. hurt her. I'm I, saying I that, it. that, yeah. that is the trade off yeah. you make for the life you choose to live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think that's, but unfair. you're not, yeah, but you're not going to be invincible from it. Yeah. Like you're uh, still going to hurt you. Yeah. I'm saying that you have to weigh the pros and cons of the life you choose to live. If this is, if, if you so choose yeah. and then decide if that's what you want. Rick Moranis decided that he did not want to be a public figure anymore. He wanted to right. raise his kid. He took himself out of the public eye. Yes. Well before all of this was a thing, he's a guy, there's a lot and of difference is, there. I'm just saying he removed himself from that okay. industry entirely because he wanted a different life. I think is, certain Certain actors, especially ones who start in childhood, though, are not in the position to leave that industry because they never finished school. They never, I mean, a lot of them never even finished, like, middle school. Beyonce only finished her seventh grade education. Really? Like, that, a lot of, of people who start in entertainment early on in life feel that they can't get a start elsewhere. They don't have practical skills. They probably don't even know how to pump gas. Like... <laughs> A lot of them, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I understand why it's something that that traps you. If you feel like that's all you're good for is an image based career path. How old was she when the meme happened? Did she say early hmm? 20s? Mm, really? Was it was it that recently? Would have been like, she's 25 now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she'd have been 19 or something like that. If it happened, in, something like that. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit younger. She might have been under 18. Right. Um, so like I said, maybe it's just this story, but I just I just say, you know There's Brett being a heartless monster to, again. To Look not, at you. That's today I, I just I don't have it in me to <laughs> just today. To, today. I don't I don't have it in me it's today. Okay. You, 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 did, uh, so the original article is uh, Hunger magazine, yeah, which I've funny. never heard of in my life. Hungry <laughs> Uh it the the title says uh Chloe Grace Moritz on fame and social media. I basically became a recluse. She was the child star who did everything right. <laughs> and yet still lost herself along the way, albeit in private. But after dealing with the paparazzi and the effects of being in the public eye, Chloe Grace Moritz is finally feeling like a grown up woman. <laughs> They, oh, they just they, they I mean, want to so the good. framing is not is not something so she good. chose it's hunger magazine that chose that framing oh yeah oh for which sure which would annoy the shit out of me if i read that about oh, myself sure. you, you think she reads this and she's like oh my god all i said was i didn't like the cover like, <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely she's like, oh, she's like i just said i didn't like the freaking meme okay you didn't have to turn this into a like now right. it's ptsd yes yes it's like, when oh. i was reading this i was like are they gonna show the meme <laughs> <laughs> they didn't no i was like, I was like you know how they're protecting her but you know, there's a whole bunch of pictures none of, of the photos like, you know that people are gonna go to the other exactly. tab and google it did they hyperlink to it at least they didn't hyperlink no. to it no they, they, 
they're out to protect him, man. Like yeah. if that's it, why I hate the media now. Like you should be tearing apart celebrities and not the public. Yes. That we're the bad. Maybe that's why the are other we the bad guys? Like, now? We're always the freaking bad guy now. You you wore like the literally worst <laughs> outfit ever for your body type. Mm-hmm. People you, made fun of me. People it. made fun of you. Boo hoo. Crying no, I get that. River. I get uh, that totally. And and this is a fairly different day. I tend to be more neutral on these things. But today I read this. No, like, you don't. <laughs> on, on, image, on image, I feel like I tend to fall more in the middle. Like I'm not a uh, I, I'm not a boohoo deal with it person for all of it. This one I'm like it was a meme for five years ago. Deal with it. Get what over. about Bryce Dallas Howard getting bullied for having a fat ass? She didn't get bullied. <laughs> She did not get bullied. That's they not tried what to happened. make her they lose weight. It. It's her job. Oh, they were like, oh, she she said something like, uh, well, the the director had my back and didn't yeah. make me lose the weight. <laughs> it's like, it's uh, like I wonder uh, if Chris guess, Pratt could have just shown up that set like a fat slob, and they'd have been like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> well, she he kind of did. Did he? In that movie? he looked he looked different by the end of it. Wait, the who? Beginning. Chris Pratt. Oh, okay. She, she, and I, no, she did not look like a fat slob. That was an, uh, uh, that was hyperbole. <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, says you. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's like there, it's like uh, everyone, uh, they all want to be strong, independent women that don't need no man until something, uh, until somebody's mean to them. Then they need their director to protect them. They need the media to protect them. Uh, and the guys are no better. Because that's, that's what the girl bossery hinges upon is, is the, backing of the state <laughs> and the media the, and <laughs> the, the guys are no better there's the there's the stranger things guys saying that there was people mean to me at a con nobody wanted to come into my line cry me a river and like why even bring it up it's like you're just well, paint, you're just you're just drawing in, more attention to your weight yeah. celebrities are intensely insecure people and yeah which i understand they don't know how to handle it if you ever see somebody have to actually act like an emotional scene on set where they have to literally like core themselves out to their like to who they are internally in front of a bunch of people it would make anyone insecure i can understand that but also like i said they take the money they take the fame you don't get to have the good and not have the bad that's not how the world works we get to be here you get to be poor but anonymous if you want like you get to be broke not know how you're going to pay your bills but at least you don't have to worry about people making memes about you because nobody gives a crap about you there, people give a crap about you. You have a ton of money, but you got to worry about people making memes, uh, telling you that you yeah. you have not, literally nothing but legs. Yeah, being a target is is again part like yeah. what you said. It's part of the uh, just part of that world. Yeah. It's come. It's it feels it, like back it's supposed in the day, to happen. It feels like back in the day they were better at at handling it, but it's also possible that they were exactly like they are now. They just now have social media to complain about. Yeah, it. well, that's that's the thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, Twitter was not yeah. You know, t- uh, Twitter was not available 20 years ago. You know, it wasn't a thing. And the internet is still very much in its infancy. And now you have, uh, it, it just feels like you're old, you're inundated with information. And so fine. You know, if this happened to her, you know, 10 year 10 years ago, it wouldn't have been as bad. You know, now everybody has a smartphone to look at. Yeah, the the phones really ruined. I'm making for that my wallpaper, by the way. Yeah, that, the, 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 the photo so. of it. So you like, and I'm looking at this magazine cover, and she gets she gets 40 pictures of her looking gorgeous, uh, uh, posed exactly how they want with all the photoshopping that you want to do. She looks fantastic. If you can't handle the one picture with you taking home a pizza. Like I'm sorry. You know the full body shots. I really just want to like Photoshop them. And then, <laughs> I really do. Make, like I could do it. I could. I could make. I could totally. Screw they with still the... dressed her terribly for this. <laughs> yeah, well, there's the one. There's the <laughs> scroll. Scroll back up. Um, keep going. One like one more. Yeah, that one. Like, like she, why like she's are you showing setting up her, her up for failure? Put, yeah. Pull the dress down. Put that leg away. Shorter. <laughs> Hide the legs. Like yeah, like she for being like five how, four. That is. You uh, could totally, you leggy. could totally extend that leg. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's so, it's so, it would take me ten minutes to do. The, the photographer is like, here, let's ruin They're the out day together. again. Like, yeah, it's like um, focus on the legs. The we photog- dare you to make a meme. Uh, <laughs> hashtag hunger magazine. <laughs> the photographer is the guy who made that meme all those years ago. He's like, he's like, could you turn <laughs> the and, ultimate yeah. plot? Hold this twist. pizza box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what she, what she could do. What she could do is could reenact put, it. Yeah. Recreate, yeah. It recreate yes today That's what's up. take the That's power it. everyone wants to be a victim nobody wants to actually stand up for themselves and do something about mm. it take a pizza box find that outfit it's probably in your closet somewhere or rebuy those clothes 
and retake that photo and actually just like lean into it. Mm-hmm. Well, at least she didn't, you know, at least she didn't say that, oh, it was sexist yeah. when they did that, you know. Small it, mercies they, on our... They, 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 <laughs> they, Small they, you know, they, they weren't blaming it on sexism or yeah. race. They were just like, yeah, they just really hate me <laughs> and my body. You that's, know? Like, that's the world we live in now. They're like, It's like, you're like, oh, well, at least they didn't make it about race or se- racism or sexism. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. That's the world we live in now. Let's do we take tracks. victories yeah. where we can that get them. That, yeah. Isn't that sad that like you have to just take the dregs of like any level of, of accountability that they're like, well, at least it's just because it was funny and you looked funny in that photo and not because everyone's an awful human being. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not because the Chinese hate you. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> Wayward Soul said, wishing for another season of Raised by Wolves, HBO. Never saw Raised by Wolves. Hmm. That's why you're either. not getting a second season. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, the reason we don't know about shows with a bad first season where it gets good is because you get canceled after the first season. See, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's that. I can't. Right. I, I'm not even remembering the premise of Raised by, by Wolves. Yeah. It's is it teenagers or something? Uh, is they, it is it like a? Oh, oh wait wait wait. Is it is it like werewolves and and it's like teenage girls or I don't know. So they just renewed the Anne Rice interview with the Vampire series I before it even starts. Wow, that's really? that, actually that's pretty good. So, wait, who, who's uh, what network? Um, I believe it's AMC. Why or, is or that? FX, uh, because it's diverse. And also AMC really they they, you know they. I need, don't know. They I, need I the hits now again. Um, N- now that Saul is gone, I'm I'm mm. actually like uh, I I threw that out there. I don't know if it's actually in the and network. Walking Dead. Mm. That's a oh that's a show that just. Uh, Jumped the shark. It's literally you know what it is yeah, now. It's terrible. literally the zombie walking really slowly. It, the show is it's literally just, it. it's just it's just sad. Really. Then they had Fear the Walking Dead, and I yep. stupidly watched that too. <laughs> did yeah. you get past the first season? Yeah, I did. I did. Really, I didn't I'm, get past the first episode. AMC, yeah, it is, it is AMC. I don't know how I knew. I, I, I it's guess like, what if we did the same exact premise but on the West Coast? At least they didn't like, call it like wolf. Walking Dead, California. Like <laughs> Walking Dead colon. in LA. Yeah, exactly. Walking Dead nine zero two one zero. So, so yes, the, it's Interview with the Vampire, uh, <laughs> based on the Anne Rice. It's like nothing like it at all because you can't make anything like it used to be now because everything has to be changed. So. Uh, but it got its second season uh, approval okay. before the first season even starts. That's that's uh, that's Lame. usually a good sign. Now that's usually a very good yeah. sign for for a TV show. The critics liked it, so it probably sucks. Uh. I already saw the trailer <laughs> and I hated it. So yeah. wait, did you? Oh, is it? Was it even? Oh, I didn't. I it's didn't not even know. out yet. Oh, but you're saying that the critics liked it. Yeah, the critics like it, which means it's probably awesome. Oh, it's, so it's it's right it's around the corner. Yes. It's oh, okay. Yep. I thought it was like mm-hmm. a month or so down the line. Uh, it should be coming out any any time now. Uh, mm. Oh, October second. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, well, that's, very, that's very, very like close. tomorrow yep. essentially. Yesh said, "Deftones li- live literally gave me ear damage." Perfect. <laughs> Good. Bobcat really said, "What do you think of Firefly? I heard they had some really good stories set for season two. Everyone should do themselves uh, a huge service and go and watch Firefly right now, after but, this episode. Okay, but see, I, I season two could have sucked because the movie itself, Serenity was yeah, that, Serenity was very hit or miss. And then if you look at other Josh Whedon properties like the the Terminator, the, the Sarah the Sarah Connor, Connor Chronicles. Chronicles First season was great. Loved the first season, and then it then it just like derailed. I'm it was kind awful. of I, I rail a lot on on Whedon as the guy who ruined pop culture because he's the one who's I blame for pop culture references being in every bit of dialogue that you ever hear now. Uh, but uh, so oh, I blame Kevin Smith. That's for exactly that. yeah. Somebody in the comments the other day said they blame Kevin Smith yeah. for that. Oh yeah, it was more prevalent to me because Whedon's was the stuff that I watched. But uh, but I, I I attribute that particularly to sci-fi more than uh, you could say Kevin Smith might have had that effect on all of uh, of media. He started it. He, he was started he was the great he was the grandfather of of that style mm-hmm. of of uh, instead of jokes it's pop culture references. It, That's which, yeah. Wouldn't you say Tarantino is on there somewhere too? The uh, With pop culture references in movies and his dialogue. But it's it. But at least there's a story there. Yeah. It's not like just two guys hanging around talking about the Death Star. Right. You know, it's like there's actual things going on true, 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 true. in his movies. Yeah. You know, it's not like, well, hey, the premise is we're gonna be in a, we're gonna be in a, a deli and uh, 
just you know silly things silly conversations happen yeah. and you got like c3po and r2d2 outside you yeah. got the <laughs> True. i've been meaning to start angel because i know a lot of people love angel mm. um i liked it liked angel uh <laughs> I love Dollhouse, which only got two seasons, and, and, and the ending was atrocious, and mm. I still loved it because I love Eliza Dushku. Uh, I, I, that's another example of kind of like a, a fantastic premise that never really found its its footing, the idea that you could wipe someone's memory and give them another personality. And turn. Mm-hmm. It's actually it's a, a fantastic. It's, it's one of the few examples of Pat Oswald actually not sucking. There's an, he's, he has an episode in that show where he uh, basically rich people can uh, hire this agency to uh, – implant like a personality in like a, a person who's had their entire personality wiped from their body from mm-hmm. their mind uh and pat Oswald plays mm-hmm. like a husband whose wife was on her he's like a rich dude whose wife was dying and had her her consciousness uploaded into the computer and then every year he like on her uh, on the day of her death he has one of the the um the blanks the 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 clean slate people uh, implanted with her personality and he spends the day with her as if it's ac- his actual Dang. life. Uh, it's unexpectedly profound for a Fox show in like the early 2000s. Dang. And then Patton Oswalt really lost his wife in real life. Yes. And yes. Terrible, uh, sad. She was a great great writer. So uh, it, it's a, there was moments of brilliance. Henry, uh, Harry Lennox is obviously a fantastic actor. Um, uh, and then it's just one of those shows that could have been done really, really well, but it was on Fox in 2009. <laughs> and it was it kind of was in the same realm as Firefly in that they didn't really know how to market it or promote it properly. So it was good. Yeah, Serenity, I feel, was just such a very, very disappointing. I've, I've uh, heard that all those actors have like clauses in their contracts now where if something comes up for Firefly, they're allowed out to do it. <laughs> wow. Like that they, they keep having that inserted in their contracts with everything that they do. So like Gina Torres, I don't know what she, what she did after Suits. She did her Suits spinoff and uh, Nathan Fillion went and did The Rookie mm-hmm. after Castle. And they all have clauses in their contract that allow them to move on if they need to to go do something immediately for Firefly. It's crazy that Nathan Fillion, that his, like, he's, he, his career is just, you know, mm-hmm. progressing and getting, like, you know, you think, oh, okay, the, you know, the, the, the writer show castle, yeah. castle, he's like, he's I like, like David castle was fun. And it then suddenly fun. it's like, wow. Every, like everybody loves the rookie. You he know? lost weight yet, to though. do that show too. He looks complete. He looks younger in, in the rookie than he did oh, really? in castle. Oh, uh, I'll point it. He's a lot like David Boreanaz. He must have like a fantastic agent. He's never not working. David Boreanaz went from <laughs> Buffy to angel, angel immediately to the bones. bones, bones immediately to seal team. He's never not working. He directs all the time. Like huh. those actors, like when you're, when you've proven yourself that like, if you can do a show for 12 seasons and show up every freaking day as the lead, who's not going to hire you if you're bankable. Yeah. Right? And, and if you have, I mean, if you have a good work ethic yes. in Hollywood, you, you'll get rewarded for it. I mean, mm-hmm. there's definitely, there's, there, there's, there's those B list actors that, you know, they come in, they, they do the job they yeah. get, they, they do, they go above and beyond and they're like, okay, let's, I'm can't remember the guy's name there there's definitely there's definitely a lot of actors like that that, Those are that the ones don't I get exalt. their credit i exalt mm. here because I, I don't care about the a-list actors i care about the ones who work on these network shows for 10 12 years get no credit whatsoever they make a lot of money doing it but they're not being treated like the celebrities of the other ones which keeps them more grounded and gives them more perspective on the industry if they're not treated as if they're the greatest thing that ever happened to the world and a lot of them go into directing uh, uh, David Boreanaz directs a lot. One of my favorite things ever is like there's a random episode of Bones that David Duchovny just directed in the middle of the show for no reason. That's awesome. It, like it's hilarious. It's like it's not. It's like I was like, is it an episode about aliens or something? And like no, it's just a random episode in the middle of the show. But I, I I exalt those actors, the ones that don't get the credit but do the work and stay hum- and stay as close to humble as you can. In yeah, I'm industry. trying to think of this guy's name. Like if you saw a picture of him, you'd be like, I've seen him in From, everything. What was he in? I'm I'm. I'm totally blanking right now. Like I, I see his face and I'm like, I know like I, I'm just trying to, but those are the ones he's... I like the ones that yeah. you don't know where they come. I mentioned Brett Cullen. He's one of those extra. I may, I guarantee you if you, even if you don't know his name, you've seen him at least one thing, but you know, when you watch him, you're like, Oh, I like, you know, that guy's good. I like that. Like, William he's Sadler. Not... William Sadler. Yeah. He's a guy who's in everything, but you don't know why Brett you like Cullen him. and Sadler kind of have a similar face. Yeah, they do. It's like this. We can blend into any type of yeah. role. Like, we, do we need an evil CEO? <laughs> sure. Do we need a kindly, father figure sure yeah yes yeah. Brett Cullen I, I do 
I do know who that is. Yeah. yeah. He, he's got he's got this hair that's just stuck in the 90s. Oh, he was in he's, Lost. Yeah. 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 So it's like... Uh, oh, Lost. Ugh. No? <laughs> in terms of how it ended or the whole thing in general? How it ended. Yeah. That... I actually, I actually cried at the ending, but I look Me back too. And, and, I'm, and I'm embarrassed. I cried, but as, I, I cried because I hated why it. Why did you hate it? Oh, just, you know, just, oh. It, was it too sincere for you? Was it too, like, like the religious thing? Was I just, that, I didn't that understand what we were supposed to take from it or, like, assume from I don't, it. Yeah. I don't like, I, I don't like these endings where oh, it it's it's all in the interpretation yes i don't i hate that but that feel, did annoy like me. to me it felt like it was like they were tying it up into a bow as much as they could in a way because they kind of gave you an answer of where they all were yeah but evangelism was in a church <laughs> yeah we were like in the afterlife sorry spoiler alerts for a 50 year old show <laughs> yeah. but um but like i, I love the show i think when i look back and i was like why was i crying i think it was because it was ending and just like leaving this world that i've been up you know invested in for so long um, but I also think they it didn't land how I wished it would have landed. Well, they were together, but like, what was it all for? What, what was it all was for? Right. Point? Yeah. It's yeah. like it wasn't, hokey. you know, like when you when you look at how the show started yeah. and you, you think, okay, well, logically it's going to go somewhere over here and then mm -hmm. it ends like that. Like, Do you remember the, the post-credits scene that was after the end of, of Lost of the plane still yes. like crashed and everyone right. thought like wait none of You're it ever right. happened it was all like a thing was life spinning, flashing right? like before your eyes or something i don't even know That's yeah like right. the, the the then they were like oh no we just added that at the end because it looked cool they, they also they, they ran out of what to do and like you could tell early on that, yeah they, they didn't know where the hell to go with early it. on that show suffered sorry from like the writing strike as well Yes. You know, so it had a lot of, oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of like problems. 2007, that would have been smack like in the middle of the writing. Yeah. Uh, mid, right mid, in the middle yep. of the, the writing strike. A lot of shows uh, that I liked, that I realized later, I'm like, why did they cancel that show? It's because they happened right as that writer strike was. That 2007 writer strike. But not all strike. writers were part of it. No, it's just, like if a show, uh, if the show had more pedigree and had been on for longer, they'll hold out for longer. But if the show only had mm. one season down, then they're more likely to just pull the plug. I on enjoyed it. what it did to late yeah. night shows though, because the the hosts just ran the show without writers yeah. it was crazy well oh, okay i i found i found a guy uh nice ne neil uh i'm gonna spell the last name uh M C D O N O. oh neil mcdonough yeah yeah oh neil, neil mcdonough is great he's also uh oh, yeah. very yeah, he's in every he's in everything he's uh he, he, he can play a cop he can play a lawyer he can do anything he's uh he's he, he's a great bad guy when he, he needs to be because he can play slimy really really well but, but he, he can play a, a, a hero type too yeah, he's, he's really good a great example is if you've ever seen the show justified he plays an absolute hilarious uh just scumbag justified was awesome yes actually. i didn't watch the whole thing but timothy really oliphant another actor yes. who's always working he's amazing um but the the funny thing is the cast of Lost is one is it's almost exactly what we were talking about. All of these actors are exactly the people who you a lot of people wouldn't know who the hell they are, but they've seen them in everything. Terry O'Quinn from that show. Oh sure. Yeah. He, you know he played three different roles in three different episodes of the X Files and the X Files movie. <laughs> he, he so he had three uh, three Sorry. roles as like random characters because it's like. It's You'll early, forget. It's the early nineties. They're like all the all of the new all of the Washington D.C. cops have these thick Canadian accents, uh, and, and then he <laughs> randomly played the FBI guy at the beginning of the uh, of the uh, X Files movie that lets the bomb explode to cover up the the aliens in in the building, and like mm. they don't explain how he was also a different person earlier on in the show because the actor's just good. He's just always there. What what show did you like with Michael Emerson? Uh, person of interest person is, person of interest. uh, so, uh, but he was also in lost, but yeah, yeah, so yeah, he's, a, cast yeah. yeah he's different he's though. He's got such a unique face. He almost yeah. has to like, um, they have actually played that up in an episode of person of interest where they like, they're like, he like escapes somewhere and they're like, here's the police sketch of him. And it's just the worst picture you've ever seen. <laughs> like they lean into the fact, like his eyes, like his forehead's like this big and his eyes are this big and it's, it's, it's great. But all of these actors, when you really think of like Henry Ian Cusick, I guarantee you, you've seen him in something you'll ne you've never, never know. His yeah, name. exactly. Never know his name. So let's move on to pod All right. So, uh, wait, oh, uh, there's some more super chats. Do you want to wait? Or do you want to? Yeah, we should okay. wait on them. All right, guys, let us move on. Thank you, guys. So it's, uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about Mr. Beast. Let's talk about Mr. Beast. Who uh, he was on um, Andrew Schultz's podcast recently. Oh, really? And uh, they offered him a billion dollars for his company. 
for do for, you know his, do you know what the parent company they, they didn't say who they said multiple companies offered him he said like more than could one he get company. sued for revealing which companies possibly offered possibly you think Depends so on the contract um, or if it's or if it's not happening, I guess it doesn't matter. So it says it emerged know. that Mr. Beast turned down an eye-watering amount of money that would have put him amongst the wealthiest bunch in the world. While many of us dreamed of joining the billionaire club, whose strange assortment of alumni alumni include Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Kylie Jenner, and the highest-grossing YouTuber of all time, didn't seem to give a crap about that. So I kind of get it. He's like, I don't want to be a billionaire and, and then work for my my own channel. Like, I'd rather actually... Well, he, would he then enter into a contract where he has to be an employee of that company yeah. Well, yeah. from then Probably. on? And well, I mean, for how long? If right. he's the face of it, right? Like, then, like, do you do Mr. Beast with no Mr. Beast in the videos? Like, I think he wants to keep the option open that he can walk away from being a public figure at any time. But if he took this deal, then he couldn't have that freedom. But also, I've, I've seen interviews where he was talking about his, you know, how... how he bought like a, a a bunch of really nice cars and he bought like a big house and yeah. he's like, that's not who I am. Yeah. And, uh, he, and he, he said he sold the car and you know, he seems, he seems kind of grounded, yeah. but he, he's, he's, he's like, it's not the things that make you happy. Mm-hmm. Right. So this article says that his reported earnings were set to be $54 million in 2021. So he, why does he need a billion dollars? Yeah. I mean, he he has more money than at that point. It's it, he doesn't. He doesn't more than you could ever think of what to do with it. Yeah, like what is he? It's not like his goal is like, well, I'm going to be a billionaire and I'm going to start like a a, a spaceship company. I remember you know? he had like a the, someone said, already did that. Yeah, <laughs> I remember he had like there was like a really really in depth Rolling Stone article about him where they talk about uh, like they go to visit him in his house and like he has a framed photo of Elon Musk in the background and they like kind of throw shade at him for because you know it's like Rolling Stone they're like Elon Musk is bad or if anything that's just like an ironic thing he put there so that they would see it and note it mm. uh, I think the Washington Post or the New York Times like tried to do a hit piece on him too it's like well you know, back in the day he would do other things and and you know they they you know like he he would say like a, a curse word or something yeah he, he, and, he they uh, had like non it was like non controversies about like stuff he said when he was a teenager or right something like you that. know like it, it, we've all been on xbox live yes. we all well not you <laughs> not me <laughs> but I, but yeah but most of us <laughs> so i mean like if you're making 54 million dollars a year does a billion really is that really enough to not be your own boss anymore hell no he's got he yeah. i mean he's I, got enough money to pay yeah. a, a, a sizable crew yeah and make his crew happy, and then make random people on the street happy. His his new for his um, uh, uh, hundred million subscribers, he gave away a private island. Uh, I right. want to know like what the hell the taxes are to on whom? that. To to they they what had a com- they, did, they did a competition for it like huh. he, like he did with Squid Games, but like so like if you take a taxes? billion dollars for any any deal, if you make a billion dollars, however you do that, it's gonna get taken from you either while you're alive or after you die. Whoever it goes to, even if your kids inherit it, it will be taken. It will be split a million different directions. When you get to that level of wealth, it simply doesn't matter anymore. The number doesn't matter anymore. If you have complete freedom because of how much money you have, there's no reason other than just like a completely illogical greed. Yeah. And he has and he has freedom. Yeah, yeah and, and he has you, it already. You know, and if you're, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't need it. So of course he's going to turn down a billion dollar deal, whatever, whatever the deal. And was. this is good for PR because it shows that you know I have integrity and I care about my in, my you yeah. Know, it's like th- that I have an independent media company and not being owned it's like by I'm a doing big it for me and I'm doing it for the fans. I'm not doing yeah. it for like. Uh, Big pharma or whatever, you know. It's like Andrew Schultz buying back his Netflix special yes. so that he could release it yeah. without editing it because they wanted him to Parallel edit economy. Yes, they wanted him to edit content out of it, and he said no. So he bought back the special from them so that he could release it on his own hmm. and then made money back like three times over. Yeah, um, that's the future. Like Louis C.K.'s new movie I really like with Joe List. You know, they, they there's no middleman. They just made it themselves, put he, it on his website. Is he in front of a door blocking a woman from escaping? <laughs> That's the final scene, well, actually. Well Spoiler off. alert, yeah. No? It was <laughs> nice. consensual. Spicy they they said culture. yes, and they watched. <laughs> exactly. They, they, and then they complained about it later, well, you know. Well, it's uh, the women. It's actually just two hours of that. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's nice. just two hours really of him. It, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'd watch it. He's like, these women are complaining. I paid money for this. Are you kidding me? I was willing to do it for free. <laughs> but, but, no, for real, I love seeing all these people 
killing the middleman. Yeah. And, and uh, I had no idea who's 23. Who? Yeah, he, he, he looks. Mr. Beast? Yeah. He, he he's looks, 23. He looks a lot older he, than that. He looks like he's in his early 30s, at least. It's interesting. Wow. Must be the beard. Yeah. But good for him. He, was, ama- he yeah. was talking about. Uh, I, I, I always think about this. He was talking about how when he was in college, he would just sit around with his friends like on, on Slack or whatever and say, and then they would look at YouTube thumbnails and going, why is this good? Like, why is this a good thumbnail? Yeah. And they would all like talk about it. And, you know, I, I'm mm-hmm. like, I want my thumbnails to be good, but I don't know if I'm doing it the Mr. Beast way. And I look at his stuff and it's just like a picture yeah. of Mr. Beast. Like that's all you need, I guess, you know, if it's Mr. Beast. Well, uh, Tim was talking <laughs> once about how like all music video thumbnails are the same. It's like the, it's a close up of the artist's face and you, you don't really realize until you start looking for it, but they are almost all like that. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Like, uh, or, or in like now, you know, like Mr. Beast probably went in the studio one day and had them take like 500 photos so that they never have to go back and do that again. So they can just <laughs> cut that out every single time. Put the white what, line around what, what PewDiePie did is he just took one image of himself and photoshopped it different obvious ways to like distort it. <laughs> like if it were if he were supposed to be like smiling in the photo, he would just like extend the yeah. <laughs> yeah he would just like obviously That's photoshop hilarious. a smile onto his face. That's genius. Yeah, you which is do. which is hilarious. So do you think there's taxes on the island? I want to know. I want to know. Did that were the did they get handed a bill? I, it's such a hassle to have your own private island. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, like gee, me. this is great. Yeah, like, how do I make gonna maintain this? <laughs> do I? Does it come with? Like, do a, I get landscaping? Does it come with a, a, like a groundskeeper? Yeah, <laughs> or is, or you know, like I I would love to know the details. Like maybe maybe Mr. Beast owns it. So mm. that these people don't have to pay property taxes you just get or whatever. Free on use it. of it, and he's just like 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 it's yours. Do whatever you want, but just like legally, I'm gonna keep so, it. And and I promise you, I'll never try and take it away from you. But I'm I'm really just trying to save you like lots and lots of money. Yeah. And I have lots and lots of money, so don't worry it about. Prob- it. They probably showed up and got hit by the hurricane engine. <laughs> oh, oh no! Remember, oh. I'm just saying it's there. It's there. I'm looking at it. Remember, up. remember that happened with Oprah when she gave away all the cars. There, like, she's like, hey, "There's a car for you, yes. and a car for you, and a car for you." And like, psych. There's like eight grand in taxes on all these. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, like the big you, thanks plebs. a lot. Yeah, the big story yeah. was uh, <laughs> guess guess what the you know the Uncle Sam is going to get a yeah. piece of those cars, yep. and those people walk those people walk in, they're like, oh my god, they're giving me a car, and they're just like, why do I owe eight thousand dollars to thanks to so the much. government? I yeah. can't afford this. Yeah. I didn't mm-hmm. ask for this car. And Oprah just fuck she freaking she's gave it to me. Laundering money to uh, to the government. All of them became anarchists that day. <laughs> yeah. It was the clearest nice. example that they were ever given. They all just like they they, they like they just slowly morph into like a don't tread on me flag. <laughs> like slowly but surely. Like Yeah. Know. That's so uh, beyond that, um, do you want to talk about the degradation of culture with Lizzo? Let's do that. Let's just <laughs> let's show this video. It speaks for itself. <clears throat> um, if you if you guys have sensitive vision uh, or or are prone to seizure, if you are or, watching this or, with a child, or avert child, their eyes. Turn their turn their eyes. Please. Cover their ears. We're, we're, we're gonna look at this. Actually, no. The the flute is actually lovely, so don't cover their ears. So the flute, just their eyes. The idea here is that no. this is Lizzo, and she is playing a how old is it? It's a several hundred years old flute. It's got to be a couple hundred years owned old. Owned by James Madison. Yeah, James Madison. Uh, who I do want to point out owns slaves. So <laughs> she's literally 36 to be 36. exact. So she is um, literally using a tool of white supremacy in this video. But Slam! Gonna... Slam! <laughs> so here we go. Uh. <sighs> that wasn't a twerk. It's that close was, enough. That was, that was, that was not a twerk. That was Guys, jiggling. Guys, you're, you're a boomer if you don't understand that that's a style of twerking. That is not a style of twerking. No. Yeah, it's no. not a style of good twerking. Even if it, okay, how, it's how all the TikTok girls do it. <laughs> even if it's not a full Basic twerk. Basic white ones. Even if it's not a full twerk, doing so with an, ex- an extremely old American like uh, piece of our culture makes it a twerk. It pushes it into twerking territory. It's just it's yeah, twerking. The, the, uh, so it's she twerking. she um she 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 played the uh the flute that belonged to James Madison in, in our culture wept. And she said, "We just made history tonight." They're obsessed with making history. There were, that was not making history. They made no history. In her eyes, like anything you do for the first time that's weird is history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it uh, so? Like if I ran into a zoo enclosure. And then uh, I don't know, like 
it, it reminds started doing me, the Macarena. Like, I'm making history. It reminds me of the, I, I think it's in the Major League movies where, like, the, the, the announcer's got the guy who does the announcing with him. It's either that or in Little Big League where the guy gives him random facts that mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> where he's like, first, uh, <laughs> first fly ball caught on a Thursday during the summer solstice. Uh, by somebody's name starting with a J. They're just lo- they're looking for things to mm-hmm. make history with because they're obsessed with their own egos. Yeah, just uh, thank you. Any meaningless milestone is noted as making history, especially when it has to do with award shows. It, it uh, the video actually scared me just just a little bit. And how do you like jump in your seat? I are, kind of think it's you, a jump scare warning. Now, like, are you gonna are it. you gonna play the other video of her playing the flute like like legitimately should playing the actually, flute? Should we actually? She is her? a legitimate she flautist the for wow. the record. She is a flautist, yeah. which is a real word. Yeah. Does she do that in this video, or is there another? Did you no, see she another just, video? she often plays the flute like in other performances, not that specific crystal flute, but her own flute, and. Is, is it's she, like kind of her thing. And she's good. Yeah. yeah. And she's good. Okay. Yes. Then you don't need to play James Madison's flute. Well, Play your own flute, basically. Like, I, I laugh because they talk about how um, it's kind of like they don't care that they're degrading culture, right? Like she's dressed like that while playing a P. Like at least dress up for it, maybe. <laughs> I like it. No? no? No, just be more naked for it. I'm just <laughs> – I, I just think Screw that this it. is like – what, Pro- I think, like dancing on twerking on the proverbial graves of our founding fathers. No, no, is that a new it, it's okay. not that. It's not that deep. It's no, not that it's deep. it is that deep no. to the people watching because they hate James Madison. Most that's <laughs> the funny. That's the funniest part. She's like they do. Just, Most if, people couldn't point pick James Madison out of a lineup. Yeah, but they you know? they know the name and they hate him on the principle mm. that he is a founding father. But it's not like he handcrafted. This crystal flute. No, but they believe <laughs> that they believe that it represents yeah, who he was and what he stood for as a human being, and also the history of our nation. And it proves Even if it's ignorant for them to believe that, it's true. And it's the hypocrisy that if we, if there was a different president in office, this wouldn't be happening because they would be talking about that, not talking yeah. about uh, this incident. Obama all, said no twerking at one point at one of his things in two thousand eight. One of the one of the things <laughs> that the media and celebrities did extremely well was um, they can just turn on a dime, right? And what is uh, bad in one administration is suddenly not bad in another. I remember when um, when the last season of uh, House of Cards came out. And they're like, this show isn't good anymore because we have a different president now, and it's just so much scarier now that evil orange man yeah. is in office. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Kids in cages was okay for Obama. Yes. Well, now we Trump. have their migrant facilities now. Yeah. Right. So I'm just saying, like, they, they're very hypocritical, and they obfuscate what's actually what they actually mean very, very well. Meaning that there's not a, an ounce of shame that she would be giving a completely different reaction if Donald Trump asked her to play that uh, same flute. She was like, am I supposed to play this uh, instrument of white supremacy given to you by a slave owner from the... You know what yeah, I'm like whether or not it's that deep in reality, yeah. uh, to them it is. Did you see the video? So why getting- give them the satisfaction of spitting on our nation's history that is what they believe they're doing and then it kind of becomes reality but how is how is a flute that was given as a gift by a by a french the statue maker? of liberty was given to us by o- france okay but th- there's a, there's a difference between a, a sim like a symbol something that has grown into a symbol or a flute that it's been in an, in a vault for a hundred years i don't think know? well just because it they're was given different. as a gift doesn't mean it doesn't belong to us and our history, right? It, but, and just because it's gone no, untouched in a vault somewhere doesn't no mean it's not to it. significant. It's just, it's just, no, it's, she, she gives it significance by calling it James Madison's flute and saying, and saying we, made, we history. made history. Yeah. So she gives it the significance. They, they and then everyone is like, wow. Except for like, it, they it, believe it's significant. If it weren't significant, why would she be playing it? I hate. The why wouldn't she just play her gonna, own flute? People are going to forget this in a week. I know. You know? <laughs> this is not, this yeah. is not like an inflection point. Of, of 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 history, it's just it's just like a, a an overweight superstar <laughs> flautist who played a flute for literally yeah. five seconds on the stage, and 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 it's more about like I think it was um, it was some political pundit who was just like, well, you know, it's they they hate her doing that because she's a strong black woman. It's like, but that's no, the setup. 
that's what it was all about <laughs> is causing a stir. But it's not and making it's, us into the villains for thinking it's distasteful. I hate objectively, the, it is. I hate the ability to pick and choose your narrative. So I hate the fact that she could do this or she could say, I refuse to play James Madison's flute because he owns slaves. And right. I don't I don't like that you get to pick and choose when you're offended by something as serious as slavery and racism. It's like this movie is not for you. And then when people don't watch the movie, uh, they're racist not. for not watching the movie. The Woman King. Yes. Well, well any uh, Charlie's <laughs> Angels, uh, Ghostbusters 2016. The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid. Any of them where they're like this... Take that, you incels. This movie wasn't It's all made about for the you. bait and switch. Yes. It's cra- it's, it, with Charlie's Angels, it's, it's crazy because the first two movies were hits. Yes. The first two movies were legitimately fun. I saw them both in the That's theater. That's what I'm saying. They were fun, though. You're not allowed to have fun and but, be hot and sexy. But anymore. also, Sorry. you know, like maybe I don't want to watch an Elizabeth Banks movie. No. Right? Like, do, did I rush out to watch Pitch Perfect uh, 3? <laughs> Absolutely not, right? Um, but this also, I'm a smart man. Rebel I, Wilson is crying. And right I didn't, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to watch uh, uh, Kristen Stewart as a Charlie's Angel. I had no interest in it. And also, I've seen yeah. Charlie's Angels movies before. Guess what? I didn't see the uh, Andrew uh, Garfield Spider Man movies. movies. I didn't see either one of them. Yeah. Does Does that make me like, you know? anti-male or something because I didn't you know it, watch those movies but it's I like just she didn't said, care yep. it's the setup that's how they get you it's it's they get to they get to win either way according to mm-hmm. them because they get to call you bad and then when you don't see it you're again bad for for doing exactly what they said yo you don't like strong independent women you shouldn't go see this movie you're like well I don't really have a problem with strong independent women but your attitude is a little bit abrasive and yeah. I, I just I don't think I'm gonna go see it well, uh, and then you don't go see it and it doesn't do well and then you're the bad guy it's like this movie didn't succeed she said what did she say for the women king she says if people don't go see this movie it reinforces the notion that black <laughs> women can't be blockbuster can't lead can't lead the box office shut up Viola Davis is a fantastic actress. You defa- you literally do yourself a disservice by boiling it down to that. I mean, I didn't watch it because of the the fake history. Yeah. Well, you it, know. Even that that doesn't bother, like that doesn't bother, it's it's not like Braveheart is 110%. It's not like any of these movies are usually 110% accurate. I don't care about that. But if they're going to tell me I shouldn't uh, that that I'm bad for not going to see it, I'm not going to go see and it. And well, also playing on it this for anything. playing on this nation's history with slavery but making a movie about warlords who enslaved people saying that because of our history yeah. with slavery, you are racist for not watching The Woman King. It's also a pick and choose your and own outrage again. Right. It's where the they same get to thing choose again here. When they want to be outraged by it because it's, uh, it, it, when it fits their agenda, they're allowed to. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. On top of the fact that I just don't want to look at her twerking. Because Lizzo's Jiggling. gross looking. <laughs> okay. Wait, okay. One, in the chat, guys. She was number one for she was twerking. Number two, she was she was jiggling. Well, Mary might have a point by saying it's, it is a form of twerking. Uh, There's a, did you look, absolutely a form did you of look that up? I'm wa- no, I haven't yet. But okay, yeah. I am going to look at the chat, though, and see. But I am curious thing. what the chat says about um, the degree to which she like, twerked. I've seen like all the girls on TikTok do it that way, not the traditional way. What's it? The traditional, <laughs> what is traditional twerk? twerk. Does somebody want to tell me what the traditional twerk? Does is? someone want to demonstrate? It's when you are not when you get on our special guest. Surprise guest. <laughs> we don't have the camera angles for that. Oh, we can we, fix that. One, they, when you two, get on all fours and you both, do the thing, two, two, you know one. her. her you, okay, you like don't need this. to be on all fours. Her, her, her. <laughs> did you see the video of the, did you see the video of the woman twerking on a cop like on a on a car outside yeah. of pa- Planned Parenthood yeah, yeah. In the rap oh video? yeah, yeah. I, if you want to talk like like a, I'm we, off on you go on all fours if you want to do twerking right okay <laughs> N- none of this mediocre half-assed twerking you right so <laughs> get it I think half-assed. twerking could be on legs and on all fours guys come on let's get along okay so, so it's kind of like um, guys th- diversity of twerking that's technique right. oh perfect that's good that's open, let's open up that business <laughs> diversity twerking will you be a teacher twerking. will you I be will, teaching I'll teach the heck out of it writing I'll and twerk twerking out of that yeah I yeah, that's right. Shane, I got a, <laughs> Shane I got a question how do you feel about Coolio yo is this sad that's a good transition from, from writing uh, it's very I, wait talking about, about what Coolio dying oh God, I couldn't. I, I didn't know how the hell we were going to get out of that conversation, so I'm just hard segueing to yeah. like, from yeah. twerking okay. to death. Okay, so you want quick. me to think about twerking and now go to cool? Oh man, are you um, really sad about cool? I actually am, uh, but it's like more of like a, from a childhood perspective. Oh, okay, like uh, my er, one of my earlier memories when I was ten, I think when Gangsta's Paradise came out. Thank you. Uh, Whoa, yeah. Uh, 
I remember my parents, I could listen to whatever I wanted all the time. I was listening to like Big Pun, West Side Connection, NWA. West Side Connection all the way. Yeah, and, uh, and Coolio. And I would just be rapping in the car all the time to Gangsta's Paradise in particular. Big L? Uh, oh, I love Big L, yeah. Bonix is a great song. Yeah. And uh, my dad turned it off at one point and was like, do you know what you're rapping? <laughs> <laughs> and this is like my very, like a very early memory of like uh, looking at literature deeply. And yeah, he, to me, he was a great storyteller. So my dad was like, I remember him walking me through, uh, oh, what's the line? Or you and your homies might be lying in chalk. He's like, do you know what lying in chalk means? I'm 10 rapping. Yeah. So he like walked me through like metaphor and all these like figurative language stuff. And so that stayed with me forever, clearly. And uh, I clearly inspiration of you becoming Coolio a writer is a literary father of mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in a way, I'm not lying because at the same time, my dad also gave me like Oh Henry and Harper Lee. So, but I loved Gangsta's Paradise and I loved Fantastic Voyage, and it's a bummer. I don't usually get bummed out by a lot of these celebrity deaths, but I I loved his music. Gangsta's the song the the music for Gangsta's Paradise is incredible. What a great interpolation of. Um, Stevie Wonder. Not to mention the fact that it was a part of the soundtrack to a highly underrated movie that is Dangerous Minds yeah. with Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, great music video with um, Coolio. Freedom Riders can kick rocks. Yeah. Dangerous Minds all the way. Yeah. Um, also, the soundtrack to Space Jam. Also, the soundtrack to Space Jam. Yes. I'm going to break this table right now. You should do that. I got, and yeah, first of all, I hit him high, hit him high, hit him low, whatever, however it goes. I just yes. butchered it, but because I'm so upset. It's got, like, that song is like seven minutes long. LL Cool J. Buster Rhymes, Method Man, I think Be Real yeah. from Cypress Hill yeah. is in it. I might be missing one. It's it's literally like some of the best rappers of a generation doing the theme song to a freaking movie about Michael J uh, Michael Jordan playing basketball with Looney Tunes. Athletes ever. Yeah, and uh, See You When You Get There, another great Coolio song. But yeah, no, I was bummed. I don't know what, what the deal is with him, but uh, people seem to be... He was young. Yeah, he was really young. The cause of death is not known. Uh, did you also know that he was in... Uh, Batman and Robin, and he played he played the Scarecrow. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't remember. Killian that. Murphy, eat your heart out. <laughs> he was in. Uh, so That's I had. I could. I didn't remember it until I saw this article. I'm like, holy crap! What? Didn't he have a cooking show as well? Uh, he has Coolio a cookbook. Yeah, it was like a web. It was a web thing. And you, but, you. Oh, so you have a story. So yeah, uh, I met Coolio nice. uh, a few years ago in Brooklyn. It was at a. Um, uh, a food festival called the Great Guga Muga. Look it up. It's a, it's the thing. It, the whole thing was a disaster. Fake. <laughs> it's real. The Great Guga Muga. The fire fest of yeah. food. Yeah. It it, it kind well it, it kind of was. It was it was definitely poorly uh, done. But uh, <laughs> Coolio had he was like at a booth and he was signing his cookbook and stuff and meeting fans and uh, he was he was a nice guy. I mean it's not Thank like you. we had like a crazy conversation. Or anything, but you know, it was, it was neat to meet. It's like, hey, cool, yeah, we're, you know, it's hey, you got food. That's was cool. This, I'm looking up pictures. Of, was he? Did he have two braids like this at that point? What was his hair I doing? I don't remember. Oh, man. Do you yeah. remember was, when uh, the, one of the greatest things about it is when Weird Al did Amish Paradise? He also did the hair, yes. like Coolio, yes. in the in the cover. It's incredible. Great. Great. Uh, Apparently, if if I remember correctly, uh, I don't think that Weird Al got permission no he was one of the few times where yeah. He, yeah he did it without like normally everyone he he would only do it if people gave him permission and yeah Julio didn't want him to do that and that was actually a, a bone of contention between them Whoa. you know when he did um when he covered michael jackson when he did fat um that's my favorite he still so performs good. that song with a fat suit on which is <laughs> honestly like he's like grandfathered in to like be allowed to do that yeah but when they did the video for that i think it's for that one he like michael jackson like told him the locations where the videos were filmed so that he could go to the That's locations. Do you know? Because Michael Jackson loved Weird Al. Yeah. Do you guys know who directed Bad? Mm -mm. The music video? Mm -mm. No. Martin Scorsese. Oh, wow. Really? Mm -hmm. That's uh, incredible. True story. Wow. Did he do a lot of music? He, there's a couple of really good directors that did a lot of music videos earlier in their career. Uh, yeah, like uh, Spike Jones. Yeah. Uh, did a lot of really cool ones. Was it Bjork and stuff? And could I mean there, there there's there's another one that I'm thinking of that I can't think of off the top of my head. But a lot of them. David Lynch, I think. David, did, my, David uh, Lynch music right video. Um, shoot, I can't think of who it was though. What? So hmm. Scorsese did that one. He directed that. I, I wonder what 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 prompted that. Uh, Michael Jackson is one of the biggest stars yeah. in the world. He probably and, loved him. And yeah. and and you're right, Martin Scorsese has uh, a connection with music. You know, with the, the, Rolling, the Rolling Stones. Stones yeah. and, David Fincher did and some the music band, videos, of course. Yeah, yeah, the band's the big waltz. amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah. David Fincher did some Roy Orbison. 
Well, Rick, David Fincher was a, a commercial slash music video director before he did any movie. Be, oh, before true. he was sucked into Aliens 3. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> um, what, what's your favorite Fincher movie? I have to look it up. I just I saw, like, I actually under us. I, I, I forgot how good Zodiac was. I was just, I was just mm. going to say that was the first time I, I love, I like, that movie. I, and it's weird because that's not my speed for a film at all, right. usually. But I, I, I love that. I love that film. But I like um, the girl. Wait, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Was that the first of the? Probably. I actually um, really like that movie too, but I probably like Zodiac more. Uh, not Fight Club, not Seven. You did a bunch of. Uh, I do like uh, Fight Club, but I love that. It would book be Seven more. before Fight Club for me. I but, like but, I like the screenplay to Fight Club better than the book. Uh, I've he, read like I think it, oh I, yeah I think it's it's except it's, except Helena Bottom Carter's character has way better lines fin, in the book. Fincher did a which crap I can't repeat right now. <laughs> oh man, they're so good. I love the book. I lo- the movie's great too, and the movie's the reason I got put onto the Pixies. So I can't be uh, upset about that. You know the way that uh-huh. that song at the end is amazing. Uh, he did a lot. Uh, Fincher did a lot of music videos. I've got yeah. Billy Idol here, Iggy Pop, Madonna. Aerosmith, Paul Abdul, wow. Roy Orbison, Gypsy Kings, uh, more Paul Abdul. Who's who's the one Paul Abdul's married to? She's married to somebody famous now too. Uh, Foreigner, wow, like like going all the way back here. <laughs> so how uh, that's like that's weird. Like to, the, he spends most of the eighties doing music videos and then gets his uh, his break to do some of the most like incredible dramas of our time. Well, Ridley Scott was a commercial director. Yes, yep, very prolific, and then made that pivot too. Oh. Emilio Estevez. Okay. Hmm. That's oh, they're married? They were Did for they two were years in oh. the 90s. Oh, okay. okay. I was like, I didn't realize Love they Emilio were Emilio Estevez. <laughs> my, he's my, he's my Did surrogate. you watch the uh, the reboot? No. The, the Mighty Ducks reboot? I'm, I'm from Minnesota, so I'm not I'm not going anywhere near the... the, the, the bo- no. No. All no. right. W- wait, what about the Karate Kid? Did you guys watch the, the, the new... C- Cobra Kai is Cobra incredible. Kai. Cobra yeah. Kai is absolutely yeah. oh, okay. incredible. I have absolutely negative faith that Disney could somehow pull off Cobra Kai with hockey. No. Mm-mm. Oh. Not, not, uh, besides, like, most of those actors are now, are, are actually, like, a lot of those actors are still doing fairly well. Uh, the kid who played Charlie, uh, the, the kid who played Charlie is very, very much still, he did, he, uh, what is it, he was in F- Fringe, uh, and then he's still working today. Uh, the, the one who played Fulton, that's Eldon Henson, he was in Daredevil. Uh, a lot of those people are still. Right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, foggy, which is funny too, because you think of him as intimidating in, in Mighty Ducks, and then he grows up and he's just kind of dumpy and, <laughs> and, and, and normal looking. And uh, or in the sequel, you had um, the uh, the lady uh, who plays not Mariska Hardujay, but the, the she's the lady who ended up in. Uh, oh, I'd have to look it up. Most of a lot of those actors were were actually played hockey in, in or, or like could actually ice skate. Uh-huh. So. Uh, though there's a, I found this absolutely horrifying video where they show you like, um, like cuts where their their hockey stick switches hands because they were using stunt people, so it just ruins the whole movie right, for you right. because like you, you don't notice the, continuity. the cuts. Yeah, it's just it's horrifying. It just ruins it for me. But um, yeah, so that and he was also in he had a cameo in Daredevil, the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie. Hmm. Coolio did really. So he was apparently a big comic book. Like guy. as himself? No, as as an as actual character. Sick. Apparently yeah. he was gonna That's play. Who? Okay, uh, this is the uh, the other thing I want to say. He uh, apparently like he says here that he was actually going to play the scarecrow in like the next movie, but Schumacher pulled out, so they didn't do it. So can you imagine if we'd gotten another movie and we'd have gotten Coolio as the scarecrow? <laughs> That's amazing. Like who just pick- been Batman. Yeah. Like who would have been Batman? It wouldn't have been George George Clooney. No, bring Val Kilmer back. I liked Val Kilmer mm-hmm. as Batman. Mm-hmm. I actually liked him. I I, I like Batman. For, I legitimately. I mean, he wasn't liked a bad Bruce Wayne, but it was just like the the whole movie was poorly written. No, it's awful, mm. but I love it. It's I mean, the, the dumbest the dumbest part of that movie, um, Batman Forever, is when uh, the Riddler breaks into the like he goes to Bruce Wayne's mansion, does the thing bleep bleep bleep, and then the 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 clock opens yeah. and he goes downstairs, and instead of. Um, Instead of actual security measures, it's just like the car comes out of nowhere. Like everything opens up for him to see. It's like it's like warning, security <laughs> alert, security yeah. alert. It's like it, 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 in the meantime, if you watch the first Tomb Raider movie, did you do you watch the Tomb first Raider? Tomb Raider is incredible. The the in the Tomb Raider movie, she gets an artifact and she's like trying to play with it, and people attack the mansion. And suddenly, all these 
security walls come down and it and it takes them forever to to get into it and but bruce wayne's security is just like hey over here come come look at me hey the computer's turning on all by itself for no reason dude security alert let's talk about tomb raider that's what we should be talking about let's talk about tomb raider second one is awful but the first one but well the, the the first angelina jolie Tomb Raider was great. I didn't see the reboot with uh, uh, of Alicia Vikander. Yeah, yeah. I didn't no, see the, that. the first one is legitimately. It's a, it's one of those movies I watch it a couple of times a year. It's it's that good. It's that bad. It's got Ian Glenn as as a <laughs> as a sniveling bad guy. It's got uh, Daniel Craig doing the worst American accent you've ever heard in your entire life, as she does a a, a substandard British accent, uh, and then they swap. So. That movie is absolutely incredible, and it's even an early sign of like kind of pop culture puritanism, where she's like, "I don't think we should make my boobs so big in the second one," and and then society. Won. What year was that? Two thousand three, when the sequel came out. So I think huh. the original came out in two thousand one, and, and the sequel came out in two thousand three. Yeah, it sounds. And, right. and then believe so, like you see the cover to the first one, and it's just blatant in your face because in the video game they're blatant in your face. Yeah. <laughs> and then in the sequel they're not there, and believe it or not, the movie didn't do as well. Gee, I wonder why. Hmm. Uh, um, I mean, I think it was. You know, bad writing, but also, yes. yeah. You but know, that first movie, Luke is, had bigger boobs. <laughs> 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 but that—that's a good example of a movie where the character is extremely. Uh, that's a strong and independent character. Is, female is character. she on your list? She's. Uh, I. This isn't even and, a movie list, this and it would TV be two Lara Crofts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so that's a, that's a perfect example of, of those movies, and everyone should go back and watch that. Um, I mean, it's not a. It's not like the. It's not a great movie, but it's definitely it's definitely up there as one of the best video game movies. Yeah, I, it, with the stiff competition of Mortal Kombat One, and uh, from uh, nineteen ninety for the Paul W S Anderson one yeah, from nineteen ninety five. That's not a great movie. Uh, <laughs> no. I'm going to have to agree to disagree on that one. I'd say the Tomb Raider movie is definitely better than the, all the Mortal Kombat. It looked really good though. The Mortal I, Kombat movie looked. Really I would have good. to I'd have to rewatch the original. I love the original Mortal Kombat. It's not movie. good. What did I, you say when you were like? But it's not a good movie. I mean, I own it on DVD, so. <laughs> oh, okay. he, he doesn't like things because they're good. He likes things because they're bad. I, I like and, them. And, because- I, and you can get into that camp, but you can't go, okay, well, the best video game movie because it's so bad is Mortal Kombat. Free Guy Kombat. is the best video game movie now. But Even that's actually based, good. Yes, that's actually. But it's a good not based movie. on. It's not based on, it's not based on an IP. Uh, and, and as far as I'm concerned, Sonic is is the best that, video game yeah, movie right good. now. The, did, did you guys like the sequel? Yes, mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. You, okay. Did you? I didn't see either one of them. I'm a terrible person. The, the, <laughs> no, no. You're out of you, here. You gotta leave. The, it's, uh, it, I think it would be better to watch it in theaters, which you lost your chance now. I'm, a, I'm a, I'm more of a Mario fan. I, I never liked the Sonic series really. I've, I've owned a couple of them. I never really got into it. I mean, my favorite video game is uh, Super Mario 64. Yeah, I was, so, a, I was a Nintendo you know, 64 and a was, Sega Genesis very, person. But I, I'm, I'm very concerned about Chris Pratt as. Super Mario in the in mm-hmm. the upcoming movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never had anywhere yeah. to to confess this publicly, but I'll do it now. I actually really liked the Angry Birds movie. <laughs> you did? <laughs> yeah, I remember my son wow. wouldn't stop Get crying. Out. Yeah, my son wouldn't. <laughs> I start. heard they made it like very emotional. It was, it like. was very ro- like. There's some jokes there that are really not for kids. Yeah. that the kids wouldn't catch though, and uh, okay. my son loved it, and he was probably like eight months old or something. He wouldn't stop crying. I'm like, here's bright colors. This is like for kids, right? And I was like, this is actually kind of funny. And the cast is hilarious. Are you this excited for Chris Pratt as Mario? Uh, no, I'm, I don't like. <laughs> is I, there pictures of this? Yeah. Uh, is he ripped? I'm just photoshopped pictures. But, uh, but then again, I wasn't like thrilled about Ben Affleck playing Batman or Heath Ledger playing the Joker. So who knows? Maybe it'll be the greatest. But I've also met, I've, I've also met Charles Marionette. So like, yeah. like he's Mario. Mm-hmm. Like that, he's the voice of Mario. Mm-hmm. Like that, and John Leguizamo is <laughs> no, Italian. I mean, Toad, Italian. Wait, what is he, does he, he play was Toad? Or he was Luigi. Luigi. He was Luigi. But no, but isn't he in a new movie too? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I, I thought he was doing a voice in a new movie. I, that's I think of him mostly now, as, honestly, is is uh, is John John Wick. Wick. John yeah. Wick. But mm-hmm. uh, but also, um, uh, what was the the big one? Pe- oh, the Pest. You know, you know. Uh, did you see the Waco miniseries? No, no, actually. Yeah, John. I thought it would be Legan too was, depressing. It, <laughs> it is, but it's but it is good. Huh. It is good, and mm. it really and and it's. Is it a dramatization or a documentary? It's a dramatization. Oh, okay. But it's 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 pretty even handed because it it doesn't it doesn't paint one or the other as like the 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 bad guys and yeah. the good guys. It's, it's very like things were 
going on on both sides that were that were bad. I didn't. So. I didn't get through more than one episode of Chernobyl before I needed to like take antidepressants. Did, and did just, you see the whole series? I, I enjoyed it. I I watched the first episode and, and I just kind of went on to other oh, things. But I've been it. meaning it was, to. It that genre is wonderfully dark. Too, I don't like the the heavily dark stuff. Oh, I also want to point out we. I, I liked Uncharted. I liked the Uncharted movie, even though it's it's objectively not good. Um, <laughs> it. Can, I've been wanting to see it. it it's fun. But yeah. It's, we're gonna it's watch fun. The Last of Us. Yes, we'll watch. We're gonna that. watch the The Last of Us TV show w- when it comes out. So, but uh, I am excited for for the the Mario movie just because we're gonna have tons of articles about Chris Pratt to cover because they hate Chris Pratt. Hollywood hate uh, the, the even media. though he's the, extremely inoffensive. But he's, it's just mm-hmm. but it, you know the hatred towards him for no like no real. That's reason. why it's just, funny. I mean, really I, like the only criticism I have leveled at him is just that he's walked back being religious. Yeah. Or being Christian, really. Um, may, well, maybe he's like, he's... I'm not even that religious of a guy, even though he's very publicly Christian. Yeah. Well, maybe like he's not like, well, I'm not the Pope. Like, I'm not that religious. That could you have know? been media manipulation, too. That maybe. could have been framing yeah. in the article. Mm. But like, I, I love how it is really how inoffensive can one person be and still be like that hated. I, by I always people. call him the human equivalent of a banana nut muffin. He is. He's just he's just kind of there. He, yeah, and he's just he's so like you hire him because he's not gonna piss anyone off, but somehow he pisses off Twitter. <laughs> it, just, it just happens. Like yeah. Twitter hates his guts. Yeah, uh, they're like typical. They're like, I'm not gonna watch the Terminalist because Chris Pratt's a white supremacist. Like, yeah, you weren't gonna watch the Terminalist anyway. Exactly, weirdo. exactly. When when people are like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna boycott the I'm not gonna go see that movie. It's like you were never gonna see that it's movie. Like, like when we're when we're talking about the Little Mermaid, I'm like, I don't care. Like I was like, I, it, we, because it's not for you. It's not, it's but you're not supporting it. But I'm not supporting. I was like, I don't. I literally don't care. I, I don't care. It'd have been cooler to do the. the I think they want to have that feeling that like you're not allowed to sit with us. Yeah. Even though no one wanted to sit with them. People said that about the first Black Panther movie, where they were like, uh, uh, "White people don't come the first week." So like we, we as if we yeah. were dying. We were all just dying to see it. Well, we I mean, we were as a, as a culture because the movie made a crap ton of money. But I'm just saying, like, I mean, there were plenty of people who just didn't care about watching it or other movies that have the same marketing. And the the person, uh, the people that said that are just the worst of the worst race baiters on Twitter. So. You know, yeah. it's, you know it's crazy. The world is not Twitter. I went, I went and saw. Uh, I'm admitting this for the first <laughs> time. I went and saw in the theater a Wrinkle in Time. Wow. Oh, no. okay. And I was. It's not your. It's it's no, not. It was for not made you, for me. According to Brie Larson. I was bored out of my freaking mind. It, it sucks was, because it's that awful. <laughs> well, I think that book was something that had the potential to be adapted into a really interesting movie. Yes. Because yeah. it has such a deep um and not just political but like human like anthropological theme to it and it's also kid friendly so there's so much there like wally i think that wally is an extremely deep kids movie that can be enjoyed by all ages they could have done the same thing hypothetically with a wrinkle in time but they didn't want to because they have to be preachy about it. Uh, guy, guys, how do, speaking of Wally, how do you guys feel about the Criterion version of Wally? No, I don't know what, no, what you're referring to. I don't know. Do, you, do you guys know the Criterion? The collection? Criterion yeah. Collection, yeah. Okay, they're usually made for like you know artsy movies or you know something like like a, a Spike Lee movie, and they make it into like a really nice package. Like they they just recently restored. Uh, uh, hmm. Citizen Kane. Okay. And you know I've never but, seen Citizen Kane. Wow, okay. But they they um they they're doing one for Wally. Okay. And they usually don't do it for Modern. like those big yeah, kind of blockbusters. They they did one from for Armageddon a few years ago and people were like they lost their minds. <laughs> they were like, This is not a criterion movie. I am it's a, a Michael Bay movie. I am here. I am Michael Bay's biggest stand. <laughs> I, I stand Michael Bay and Michael Mann in equal parts. <laughs> mm. Uh because I love that he just pro he it, was an hour and ten minutes too long. Heat's an awful movie. I will. I Heat is my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I will point out that the third act uh, drags. Drags uh, and he and completely. You know, uh, De Niro's character is completely 
uh, he contradicts himself the whole time. He's like, "Yeah, I don't, you don't get personal," and then he gets personal for the dumbest reason. It's not they, even and like they don't space it out. So like, it makes sense if like it doesn't happen instantly. But like, they could have like it. To, like he gets dragged into it becoming personal, and it comes slowly. Like, it happens more slowly, but it seems to just counteract it almost instantaneously. Do you know about the sequel? Yes, the book. The book, the yeah. Book, yeah. Okay, uh, Heat 2. I, I also want to point out that the, I, I believe the same thing is true for Casino Royale. I think the, I think the third act is almost completely unnecessary. Uh, after, agreed, agreed. After they get rid of uh, Madsen's character. I don't mm-hmm. think that, like, I didn't care about any of that after after that. But, but like, we're supposed to. Like, that, yeah. that basically sets, it sets the character's tone for the rest of the, uh, you, oh, you, you, I hate Spectre. I hate Spectre. Yes. Oh, it, I hate Spectre. Like, the, the, the woman's, uh, like early in the movie and I can't remember like names or anything, but, uh, he, he kills a guy and then, uh, the wife is there and then he has sex with the wife. Like, wait, where did that come from? Yeah. You it's know? really, it's really, it's like that one in the one with the, like the, the escort lady in like the, the hotel in Monaco in, in Skyfall, which feels kind of ra- rapey in a way where he's just kind of like walks in the shower and like, they don't really explain it. It just kind of happens. I mean that one. That one's okay, yeah. but he'd be like, "Hey, he's gonna have sex with the woman he just, uh, yes. the husband he just killed." Like, yeah. I don't know. Super uh, weird. And I and I actually did not see uh, No Time to Die. Yet. Just saw it the other night. I've I've been just kind of. Uh, I not wanted to see it in theaters. Thrilled. I'm not a huge fan of uh, Brosnan. I still prefer Brosnan. Just mm. my generation. Just not, I, not Connery. It's who yeah, I, grew no. up I prefer Sean Connery. Sean Connery. He's the goat. Like that's yeah. He's he's the best. Although, although actually, one of the best, one of the most underrated James Bond movies is uh, not Connery, not Roger Moore, not it, it's George Lazenby. Yeah, yeah, that that movie. He's not a great Bond, but a great story, great movie. Should have been. They sh- they could have actually remade that. And nobody would have cared. See, hmm. I think all of Brazen's except for the last one, a- a Goldeneye is objectively one of the best Bond movies. It's ever well, made. it's the it's the best Brosnan. But easy. but I believe that uh, the story behind uh, Die Another Day, which is about a corrupt media mogul trying to manipulate the headlines uh, f- for business interests, is actually highly relevant today. And I think the anarchist story of the world is not enough is so inoffensive. And it's like it's like we were Berlin b- between. Political strife. Mm-hmm. We didn't know what to do. They're like, we don't know what to do. There's no commies. They're, 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 they make him an anarchist. They didn't know what the hell to do with it. Uh, and I love that movie. I love both of those versions of it. I think that he had an underrated ability to perform extremely kind of volatile, like anger and intensity in in moments, and mm-hmm. then return back to kind of uh, irreverent and uh, and not quirky, but irreverent in kind of. Uh, what what would the term be for that? Lighthearted in a way, like the way he the way he could be talking to Q was completely different than the way he would be when he was uh, when he was angry at somebody in those movies. And I love that version of Pierce Brosnan, and I think Golden Eye is an objectively good story. If they wanted to talk about making these characters in, in doing a spinoff, they could have very easily done one with 006 in that movie from Sean Bean. Right, like I would have. I, that's one I would actually want to see. It wouldn't feel like a lot. One of the things I rail against is now is like they give people spinoffs with no impetus. They're doing an Echo TV show based on the character from Hawkeye, and nobody gave a crap about Echo in that show. She didn't have a standout performance. There was nothing about it inherently good enough to deserve right, a yeah. spinoff. But the Alec, uh, the Sean Bean performance in that movie actually, I believe, warrants. Being having its own story, told. but he dies. But he dies. Well, you you could have done a. Okay, here's let's. Did you see? Are you like a James Bond person? Yeah, ish. Just a Sean Connery person. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, then, do you guys have an opinion on who should be the next? Because this is potluck. Yes. Who should be the next James Bond? Because they they are uh, the the broccoli company is actually searching for the new James Bond. Who should the new? Who who in your brain? Would would be the new James Bond. I don't know who it will be, but it, uh, or who it should be, but it probably will be Ray Gajon Page, the the actor from Bridgerton. And at this point, you're like, it's a man, yay! <laughs> <laughs> what, what they're doing, I believe, I believe what they're doing is what they're doing their version of the big ask, who which gives is like, a like crap maybe they about should be Bridgerton trans. though. Like, how did you earn that? They, I think you know? the same thing with Daniel it's Craig. It's not like yeah. like oh wow Tomb Raider. You know, it's like uh, we talked. Yeah, but he was, the, he was in the he was in the the girl with the dragon tattoo before that. Mm-hmm. Was he? Yeah, yes. it was really good. Actually, I thought that he was in. I thought that that, that was, was actually after right? 
Casino uh, Royale. That's what I thought. I could. Uh, I thought it came on to. I, I could be wrong. So. I could uh, be wrong about that. We've right. talked about Killian Murphy. Yes, you, I don't know. Mary he, doesn't like it. Or? Killian Murphy. No, I, don't, I don't. He has no. a villain face. He does not have a Bond face. He has a villain face. No, I still but like but Daniel Craig had like a gruff face. He was not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he was no Sean. He was no Sean Connery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. He does. He, or he's not even Pierce Brosnan level like no. handsome. He is much more of an everyman yeah. type, type face. I think Ray Gage John Page is who they go. I would. I'd go with Henry Cavill if he had to lose like some of the muscle. Mass, but he's getting too but old. he's but he's already done uh, the man from Uncle. Yeah, yeah. it's he's kind of done the spy thing already. So we do or don't like Tom Brady. I kind of do. Tom Brady, Tom, whatever his name is, not Tom, so Brady. Tom, Tom Brady. No, Tom Hardy. Hardy. No, no, let's go back to Tom Brady. Tom let's, make, <laughs> let's make him. The hell with Bond. Giselle. Someone yeah. said Chris yeah. Pratt. Chris <laughs> <laughs> that would be incredible, oh, bro. We said no. Shia LaBeouf last time. Shia LaBeouf, yeah, yeah, like Ryan Jim Reynolds. Reynolds. <laughs> Definitely not. Well, the you know the, I think really the only. Uh, qualifications that you need for James Bond is that you're a white man. S- sorry, Please. Idris Elba. And, uh, he needs to be a villain. No, look, look, I, I really, I really think Idris Elba is, is a great actor. No, but I'm saying make him a bad guy in a Bond movie. No, don't, yeah. no, give, Didn't give, give him his, Hobbs give and Shaw? his own franchise. I don't Didn't know. Give Hobbs and Shaw. He plays the bad guy in Hobbs and Shaw. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, the, but and he's got or, super or, strength or the and wire? stuff. Yeah. The Wire? He's a bad guy. He's the dr- he's the the drug dealer in the wire. He's yes. awesome. He's, well, and like that, I think that was like his first thing. It was his big, yeah. Channing Tatum. Also, his uh, that oh, was no. Mike that Myers. Was Mike, no, so, Mike so he has Myers. to be a white man, and he has to be Robert he has to be at least British. Which is Honestly, why I, I Robert, always say Ricky Gervais should be James. Bond. Robert Pattinson <laughs> is something they would probably do because they're going to want to go with skinny and inoffensive. They're also so. mentioning no, um, God, Killian no. Murphy. Uh, not yeah, Killian not, Murphy. Yeah. Uh, I don't Ian know. Ian Crossland. No, the thing I think I Ian think Crossland. They're, <laughs> I vote for that. Timothy the Chalamet. <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're reading the chat. Oh, the suggestions great. are so ri- the suggestions are so ridiculous that when you like like as long as they cast a, like I don't think they're going to cast a white guy. I think they they're going to cast Ray Gage on page. Everyone's saying Henry Cavill, but like he's too old now. No, he's getting closer. Harry to Styles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't I don't think that they're going to go for somebody who's not white and, I, I and, and because of international audiences, right? And, oh, and also, Bond does very well overseas and yes. you might not want and, to rock and that here, boat. And here's yeah. the thing, you know, um, he, I mean, he's, he's written as a white man. I mean, if you read the books, yes. I mean, yeah. like he, they describe exactly who this guy is. Um, well, Ariel is, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't right. matter. It doesn't okay. matter. You know, but then you, but then you look at the Fantastic Four. Okay. And I made, and I made this argument. Whoa. I made this argument, uh, back in 2000, you know, Fantastic Four, 2015, Michael B. Jordan. Right. Uh, they, they made the, the, the premise was that, uh, Sue Storm was adopted yep. so that they could make, uh, <laughs> Uh, Michael B. Jordan's dad, yeah. like a black scientist, and he he's black, and and I just said, this is absolutely stupid. If you're gonna if you're if you're gonna go this way, go all the way. Make yeah. make the entire cast black. Yep. You know, make Johnny Storm black. Make Mister Fantastic like do it. Do ever or or at least make Sue Storm. And you know, and, yeah. and Johnny Storm the you know black. Who cares, right? But. Edge. But it didn't do anything. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't help with the with the. There was no chemistry with those cast members at all. Yeah. Like that's that's well, how that movie's famously stuff. that me that movie's famously cursed. Like that director. Yeah. Said, yeah like, absolutely. And and that guy's never gonna make a movie ever again. No. Nope. Right. But uh, with the new Fantastic Four, there you know we saw John Krasinski, uh, yeah. at, who just looks. Like Reed Richards, Mister Fantastic. Yeah. You know, I mean that that that's almost that's almost dream yeah, fantasy she- casting. And if you and if you go the uh you know the the diversity route, a lot of people are going to get mad because they're like, we could have had that. It's like it's like in a Star Wars movie yeah. in, in um in the Force Awakens. I think Mark Hamill put out a it was a Photoshop of it was Chewie, Leia, Luke, and Han in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. And uh, oh, and Lando, and Lando was and there too, and and he was basically like what we could have had, Ugh. and instead it's like what you didn't got. you didn't have Han or Luke interact, you didn't have Han or Lando interact. I mean, it was like those they were just like okay, we're going to spread out the cameos for three movies, and it was such a mistake. Yeah. And I and I hate I hate the pre the uh, the, the new sequels like oh, yeah. just it makes me angry and i want billy d williams as a bond villain bond villain too i mean too late you know <laughs> uh, but you know 
he he could have. I'm, he's been a he's he's been a good villain you know, in other a, things though. In the show White Collar, he had a he had a, an episode where he got to have a bunch of scenes with Diane Carroll, like right before Diane Carroll passed oh, away. Oh wow, like, incredible! That's cool. Like, like Diane Carroll's awesome. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That she's like she's like she's a she's a perfect example in that show where she plays his like landlady in this mansion, and she only shows up in like a couple episodes a season. But like that's the perfect example of special guest star. Because Diane Carroll is such a was such an icon. So I'm Diane Carroll. Yes, yeah, you are. You are the Diane Carroll of this show. Can you sing? Can you sing like Diane Carroll? No. They have an episode where they have an episode where she performs live. It's it's incredible. Wow, so, that's yeah. cool. So yes, uh, you want to go to the to the super chats, or do you want to do Haley Haley Bieber? Uh, we can cover Haley Bieber. Haley Bieber, if you'd like. do it. It's a it's a fun note to end on. She uh, recently admitted that she fantasizes about attacking paparazzi's cars with a baseball bat. <laughs> and I actually was listening to her say this in the car on the way here today, um, this morning. And uh, it, it was on her appearance on the Call Her Daddy podcast, which if you don't know, it's, it's aimed at girls in their 20s. I guess they have a lot of pent up rage. Yeah. Um, so she was just asked, you know, how do you feel about the fact that the paparazzi are always like waiting at the end of your residential street yeah. for whenever you leave the house? And she, um, said that it comes with the territory and she didn't ask for it, but she understands that it comes with the territory of her career. Um, but she said, sometimes when there's paparazzi following me, I have a flash in my head of like getting out with a baseball bat and literally destroying their car. It makes me so annoyed that I'm like one of these days, I swear I'm going to get out of the car with an effing baseball bat. <laughs> this is a hypothetical situation, by the way. That's my urge right now. It's such so a she, throwback to like old school Haley Hollywood. Bieber. We got mad at paparazzi. I hope that she Not actually follows moves. through on this yeah. just <laughs> for the shots of her with the baseball bat. But... Um, <laughs> It's unfortunately only going to happen in Minecraft. <laughs> it's an old, it's it's a throwback to the time when they got mad at paparazzi and not people making memes. Sometimes it's genuinely <laughs> justified yeah. if they're invading your personal space in a like a criminal way. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes but, they've like jumped celebrities' fences and gone into their private property. That's when you have license to do whatever. And notice Haley like kind of walked it back. Yeah, she was like. It's a hypothetical yeah. situation. I, I'm just kidding. Okay. Just ki it's yeah. just a joke. It's but a on joke. the other hand, and this is this is from 2012, I believe. It was uh, uh, Charles Barkley, the yes. uh, basketball player. Yeah. He was uh, he was being interviewed by Jim Rome, and uh, and he goes, "I'm going to read you the, the quote here." Uh, Barkley says, "Fans, man, they love their team and their player. They don't want to hear any criticisms. They just want you to be 100 percent for their team. Period. I think it's only a small fraction." I think 80% are great, 20%, I wish you could just take them out back and shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Crazy. And then, <laughs> ah, the good old days. In <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> Rome says, Rome jumps in and says, well, maybe not shoot them, Chuck. Uh, and Barkley goes, no, I meant that, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> they, give, they literally give him a chance to walk it back. Give him a chance, and it's like, no. Come on, Haley Bieber. Stand by what you said. That's amazing. Sometimes fans are worse than paparazzi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I but mean, you can't say that publicly no. if you're a celebrity. All right, let's do Super Chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, DD Mega Do Do 97 said, finally get to Fed Culture Crisis and set off the meter. Thank you for that. I don't watch this show as religiously as your subsidiary show, Timcast. The one that we... Oh, oh, that small startup that we... Yeah. That we watched. Yeah, yeah. That one. Um, you guys know that this is the old Timcast <laughs> yes. studio, right? Well, we've we've transformed it. Right, okay. yeah. This oh, show's come a long you. way since the <laughs> early days. Keep Did up you know the that? good work, guys. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Center Conservative Mom 98 said, My TikTok profile pic is a caricature my best friend made for me of a meme some jerk on Twitter made of my face to demoralize me. Owned it and love it. See, now if go. only Chloe Grace Moretz could take that advice. Learn a yeah. thing Maybe you too. should send her a message. Yeah, hit say, her up. I have some unsolicited advice for you. <laughs> and then Grace send Moretz. some suggestions of yes. photoshopped yeah. images. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Bulldog96 said, saw the de-aged Harrison Ford and leaked trailer is in same 
Nazi disguise from Last Crusade must be member berries. The, the hmm. that's one of the things that they've they've not learned how to do most time. Thank you, and we're getting close to a, a second crisis party. Uh, but um, it's like there's a way to do cr- uh, member berries well and, and incorporate it into the story. Cl- uh, Cobra Kai incorporates it well into the story without just yeah. throwing a bunch of garbage at you and saying, like, remember yeah. this? Maverick, <laughs> Maverick did that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. One of the best examples is when you get to see the picture of Iceman on the, like, on the wall mm-hmm. uh, and, and all the callbacks. But they're, they're woven in yeah, in a way that's actually artfully done rather than what Disney does, which is just, <laughs> remember, this is how Han got, the, got his blaster. Like, yeah. it's stupid. It's, it's, <laughs> it's stuff that doesn't Rings of Power extent. does it, too. Yeah. Oh, but I've, then they, they also are looking to to f- attract a new audience that isn't familiar with Tolkien. So it's like, pick one. Are you going to do fan service or something that's appealing to all audiences? You can't really do both. They what do you think Solo would have been like the original cut, original directors? Do you think it would have been any like better? No, uh, I, I don't think that the script would have made it that far to be better that far. I think Kathleen Kennedy was probably heavily involved right from the beginning and just, uh, they were, they, the directors tried, 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 tried. And then finally, got, I mean, the same thing, Colin Trevorrow, right? He was kicked out when they were trying to get him to do. Yeah. Uh, they, they do that the a lot one. to these people. Kathleen Kennedy clearly has like what knows what she wants. Uh, the problem is she doesn't know what's good. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Like it's a, it's good for a, the uh, the showrunner or the person in charge to know what they want. They just have to actually know good things. And she doesn't know good things. And I think the worst part of that was the the casting. Yeah, it's not it's not that I have any beef with that actor, but it wasn't it wasn't Han Solo. He didn't have the Han Solo smirk. And how do you he have didn't... like like it's a very large ask to find a young actor with that type of gravitas and charisma that also happens to look like Harrison. Well, they Ford. had the guy guy that looked that was from um he he famously would do harrison ford impressions and he looked like harrison ford yeah this guy on t on, on youtube and he was in uh the age of adeline okay where he plays a younger harrison ford and he's he he talks like him he's got the smirk he's got like the whole yeah. thing and then you watch solo and you're like i i didn't believe any part of that it, it may be the very 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 end, end. with the poker game but it, that's when it felt to me like, oh, that, okay, that's Han Solo. But that rest of the movie, I just not, didn't Mark no. Mark Ugh. Harmon has his own son do flashbacks for him and stuff that he's in now. Okay. He's in NCIS, because he did NCIS for like yeah. 18 seasons, and his son <laughs> uh, plays him, like a younger version of him in the show when they do flashbacks. I don't know how we got to Solo. I'm sorry. I'm not sure how we, uh, how we got there. It's okay. That's how it goes. Sorry, Super Chats. <laughs> Waffle Sensei said, Walking Dead seasons one and two was awesome, and who the F decided to remake Interview with the Vampire? Mm. It's done, and it was perfect. Ugh. Uh, Hollywood decided because it's an existing property. And, and you so don't matter. And, and we don't matter. <laughs> I was at the New York Comic Con uh, the w- when they were, you know, they had like the, all the cast members of The Walking Dead before the season started, hmm. and uh, you had Frank Durbont who directed... Uh, Shawshank Redemption, mm-hmm. one of the greatest movies of all time, and he was and he was like the showrunner, and he got kicked off after like the first season. But he was he said this show could go on forever. Yeah, you know this is it, the Walking Dead should have been a show where it could have kept going and going. People die. Are the comics come. not continuing the, the, still? The con comics are done. They, they the randomly done. ended like when two, did they two years ago, hmm. two or three years ago? But I didn't the, expect them to to yeah. end. But the like, actual show, the show should have ended. been on for like fifty seasons. Yeah. You know, you could have had uh, you know the, the kid grow up and it's like oh i've i've been watching this kid on when TV they for killed 20 years carl when that they was killed it. carl i was, was done over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. thanks guys yeah. spoiler because he was the future of the <laughs> of the show Jeez, i'm yeah, just started exactly. watching Wait, this show what? i just started watching this show really? like a week ago. no i'm just kidding uh <laughs> you jerk <laughs> that would be your fault anyways <laughs> i know i know i'm coming on a show where we talk about spoilers all the time yeah sorry sorry we ruined a 20 year old 20 year old show yeah. <laughs> Duck Paints said Sean Ashmore. Sean Ashmore what? is an actor. I don't know what they're referring to. Context he's was got it a, he's probably got a, for, uh, for Bond. Got a, he's got for a Bond. twin. No, 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 that was, no, was way before we started Sean talking about Bond. Sean Ashmore has a twin oh. brother named Aaron Ashmore that also acts. And then hmm. uh, here's the funny thing: is like he's been in things where he's um, they'll do they'll put both of them in there and they look kind of alike. They, they look a lot alike, but uh-huh. they have very different personalities. 
So mm. okay, uh, but there, yeah, I have no idea who this person. Sean is. Sean Ashmore, uh, one of was in was in the following. Either Sean or Aaron Ashmore was in the following, <laughs> and then the other one was in uh, Killjoys. Oh uh, wait, wait, in, wait, wait! In, so uh, we're we're talking about uh, actors who were like you know character actors who were in a whole bunch, bunch of stuff, but yeah. aren't huge. You've stars. seen you've okay. seen Sean Ashmore and everything. Uh, this guy does not look familiar. Uh, <laughs> he was in he was in the later Sorry. seasons of Warehouse Thirteen. Uh, as he's a, in the boys. He's in. He's in the boys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then his brother is also an actor. The rookie. Oh, he was. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. He was in Cadet Kelly. How did Cadet I? Cadet Kelly. <laughs> Classic. Aaron Ashmore is the one I've seen That's more funny. stuff of. Waffle Sensei said, "I can't believe James Madison used to own Lizzo's flute." How did? I, it's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Rascal King said, "The Rascal King misses lids already. That is all." Uh, so many, She's coming back next she, week. We've got but, one more week. We've got one more know, week. She will be back next Wednesday, folks. That, after that, that is all. Action Man said Lizzo, more like Lardo. <laughs> 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 yeah, got him. <laughs> Nathan Koss said they do something obnoxious and then get mad when you paint when you point out it's obnoxious. Defending the behavior immediately puts it in the normal box. Yep. James Ornthal Wen said Coolio was part of WC's Mad Circle, though. Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Well, is, are they saying West Side Connection? What's it? Uh, oh, no. Or was uh, it the group before he was with Coolio? Okay. Uh, okay. WC in the Mad Circle, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Derp said Coolio cameo in 2003 <laughs> Daredevil movie Director's Cut. Yes, the cheesy Affleck one, funny court scene, worth a watch, look it up, that is all. It's got the guy from <laughs> Shawshank Redemption plays, uh, is, plays Kingpin in that movie. Clint Torresaurus. Oh uh, no no no! Uh, you're thinking Green Mile. Green. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Oh. You are correct. Clint said, "Howdy, people. I, sorry, I'm late. I was watching, or I was catching up on Tales from the Inverted World. Perfect. Sweet. But he Thank he you. spelled Tales like Tales. Oh, like okay. An so maybe it was the tale. other one that we put out. <laughs> like it's all animals. an American tale. Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Action Man professional hater said John Leguizamo was the clown <laughs> in Spawn. He's, Spawn, and I, yeah. I hear that he's not—he's fa- not a fan of that either. He's like he—he he's, wasn't not happy about that. I, mm. you know, Spawn was such a disappointment. Another one um, they, they could get right if they wanted to, but they don't. I mean, you know, um, it's—it's it's not that I—it's not that I hated the casting. I think Michael Jai White was 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 good as Spawn. But it's just so poorly written. It's really, it's really hard to to tell. And when I saw him in Dark Knight, I was excited because you know, and, and a great, a great tiny little part. You know, he, and he's he's a TV dude too. Well, like he's in like he's in a lot of TV. Well, Black and, Dynamite yeah, but, too, which is just. I, I, I oh you don't you don't know Black Dynamite? Mm-hmm. Um, look up the trailer at least okay. on YouTube. Holy, it's very it's very funny. He's one of those dudes who's like, he's a legit martial artist, so he's uh he, he's he's believable in those roles. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Bobcat said he has the absolute best gunplay in Hollywood. We use it as a training video in the military. They still do that with the 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 bank uh, the bank heist scene is still used to train uh, SWAT officers in the LAPD. Oh, for heat, yeah. And also <laughs> the best sound design for uh, f- uh machine or for like rifle fire in in a movie. It's Extremely disorienting, extremely loud. It sounds exactly like what you would hear if you actually heard uh, a weapon firing. That's funny. Uh, you should mention that. I think it. I, I think it was uh, Christopher Nolan mm-hmm. who was uh, interviewing Michael Mann, and he was talking about that sound design, yeah. like from from that scene. Because he's a. He's. A, I mean, that's the reason he used William Fickner in the Dark Knight in the bank scene because he's a fan of of that movie. Mm-hmm. He's a fan of Michael Mann. Uh, because William Fickner played the the scummy guy who tries to pull one over on Macaulay in that movie, and then you get the great scene where it's like, "Who am I talking to? I'm talking to an empty telephone," because there's a dead man on the other end of this <laughs> effing line. I love that movie. Uh, Bobcat also said Mary should be the next James Bond. Yes. All right. I can Jamie be Jamie Bond. Bond. You can be Jamie Bond. Jane e- Bond. Everyone will go see it. It will make a gazillion dollars. We'll have to kind of uh, uh, workshop the action scenes a little bit. It might be slightly unbelievable <laughs> if you're beating up a bunch of people. But you know what? They do that all the time now. 
Yeah. For every pound under 100 pounds is another Navy SEAL you can beat up. It doesn't even have to be Jamie. Just just say just, James and, you know, it's like gender's a uh, construct. That's right. There you right. Go. right. Right. Just don't acknowledge it whatsoever. Yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. James, and, and it's like a woman walks through the door and you're like, oh, no, it's that stupid woman. She heard the wrong name. It's like, uh, so, James, uh, we have uh, another mission for you, <laughs> classified. Jordan is a, is, a, is a girl's name now. Yeah. Well, isn't there, isn't, isn't James King like a model? Isn't she a, a woman? A woman. Ooh, oh, I didn't, know, I didn't that. know that. Hold on. Learn something new every day. Or maybe I'm. Hmm. Maybe this three-hour podcast yes, has we're, me. We're running uh, long. We got three more guys. Okay, waffle three sensei. Three more hours. Three what? More, <laughs> three more. Three more super chats. <laughs> waffle sensei said, "No, Killian Murphy. Stop. He's too skinny, and he has dead eyes. The dead eyes do it. He the dead eyes are why I want him. <laughs> no, we're not having this argument again. Yes. You're wrong. I well, thought he was supposed to be like all damaged and traumatized and dark and stuff." Right. I don't want to see damaged. Uh, empty That's what intensity. James Bond is. I want to see damaged. Bond I want to see damaged. He's calloused and and dead inside. No, I mean, no. Just no to uh, no, not no to that. No to to. He just to, can't to, look yeah. like he's dead inside. He has to still look alive. Uh, Walker, Texas Danger said, "I agree with Harry Styles for Bond because it's like a movie." Mm. <laughs> Oh, and I'm not. And you're like pre- playing pretend. <laughs> a lot playing That's what pretend. acting is. It's very fun. As Chris Pine looks at him, like, get me the frick out of here. I-, I need to go. And I'm not wrong, by the way. So Jamie King, J A I M E. Oh, you got to put the I. Oh, right. right. Yeah. Well, no, wait, wait. She, uh, American actress and model. Uh, but when she was when she, early in her modeling career, she went by uh, James King, which is a childhood nickname given to King okay. by her parents. So I wasn't. I wasn't okay. making it up, folks. Well, okay. I, was thinking, I was thinking of like Jamie Alexander spells her name that way. J A I M E. That the can ex- also be a, yeah, but, a guy's but she's name. also James. Yeah. So like Mary, uh, when you play James Bond, when, you're in the clear. <laughs> you did it. Terrence Rice said no in real life. Sam Hyde hmm. as James oh, Bond from the Haley Bieber thing. Yeah. Not in Minecraft. In real life, <laughs> thousand foot deep end said super late to the show today. Hey y'all. From the Babylon Bee today, not to be outdone by Lizzo, Beyonce performs concert wearing George Washington's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the Babylon Bee is consistently the greatest thing on the internet. It really, you yeah. know. Uh, like a lot of like every time I've ever done IRL, it's just me giggling at Babylon Bee things and showing it to, to everyone. It, it, <laughs> like the onion so used to be yes. so great. Yeah. Like when I lived in New York, they yep. used to have uh, physical copies of the onion for free every oh, week. Oh, wow. Yeah, like in it. You know, you could get it out in the street in like the little plastic copies. boxes, uh, and then and then they they stopped doing it, and they had like the Onion TV show, which oh, so much of that is so funny, and then it just like hit a brick wall, and then Over. The, the Babylon Bee came in and mm-hmm. just uh, yep. actually Elon Musk was talking about potentially buying the oh, Onion, no. but. They, he would have also had to buy things like the AV Club and like all these other things. He's like, no, nah, I'm good. I would love to yeah. see him turn the AV Club into just a super big like troll farm. Like, <laughs> I, they, out of all of the sites, Cinema Blend and the AV Club and IndieWire are the most pretentious media sites on the planet. They, really? They really, not are. like The Guardian or Slate. Oh, well, no, or well, I'm talking. I'm talking specifically for entertainment. For entertainment, like, yeah, like the the comment section of IndieWire mm. and and the AV Club is like walking into a liberal arts class <laughs> uh, on your Uprox fr- is still pretty bad. Yeah, so yeah. not a fan. Uh, but there was a, I, I like the more wholesome, I like the non-political Babylon beast. Like, I like it when they do like the- I like when they do it all. They're, they're just very funny, yeah, like, you know. But like they, they had one the other day, it says like a uh, cashier uh, a woman with 29 keychain, with 29 scannable keychains uh, makes cashier feel he's being cheated on. But like, it's, I love stuff <laughs> like that. It's like, it's, it's very wholesome and it doesn't really uh, lean one yeah. way or the other. I love the political stuff too, but sometimes yeah. they can get spicy. With, with some of their stuff. I like the stuff when they pull back a little bit. So, Thanks. All right, Shane, let everyone know where they can find you. Thank you, my friend. Yes, yes. Uh, you can find the season finale of Tales from the Inverted World on TimCast.com this Sunday at 10. Pretty stoked on that. The book will be out sometime soon after that. And I've started season three. And uh, yeah, we're, I'm Shane Cashman on all the social media platforms. You can find... Tales from the Inverted World on Facebook and all those fun places. Already for... working on season three? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Where can they find you? 
Uh, I'm on Twitter uh, first and not first and foremost, but uh, you know, I'm on Twitter at Don't Walk Run, all, all one word, uh, and I'm on YouTube at Don't Walk Run Productions, and that's that's uh, you know my my big channel and and uh, you know not as big as you guys. You guys are doing <laughs> no. You, you, this this was this was really fun, and I've been uh, I came up here to be on TimCast uh, from Florida, and I I flew up here not knowing there was going to be a hurricane. Uh, right, I the flight was booked and Has everything. Has it been downgraded to a tropical storm? It's a tropical I, I, storm okay, now. It's a tropical so, storm now. Okay, yeah. so it's fine. Just fly back now. Well, you're Lydia's really... trying to get me back yeah. on Saturday, yeah. so uh, so I've kind of been stranded up here. So yeah. I was uh, you're on in a, limbo. I was on the second day of like I'm a refugee essentially. <laughs> but uh, well, we are not Martha's uh, you're Vineyard. You're a climate <laughs> refugee, yes. really. But, but Lydia was like, you know, you you'll you know, I think you'd be, I think you'd have a fun time on mm-hmm. pop culture crisis, and I was like. Done. This, well, do this one ran long today. Holy crap! I oh, think I, this is the longest show so, we've oh, done. Oh yeah, like I didn't realize we because we read all the Perfect. super. Well, chats, we had so. two. We had two yeah. guests. Yeah. Well, a main guest <laughs> and a yes. very special guest. <laughs> so of course it has to be. Of course it has to be longer Extra by long. a factor of. We have whatever. a special <laughs> guest and a special needs guest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Does that mean we won't me? say which is which? Uh, Does that make me special needs host? I'm the special <laughs> needs guest. I'll, I'll admit that. I'll admit that. But but thank you guys for having me on. And so don't walk run. Uh, on Twitter and Don't Walk Run Productions. Uh, I do like a lot of political stuff. I do some pop culture stuff. I've actually done a Batman Begins, like my the very, the oldest video on my channel is a 20 minute Batman Begins review and I just tear <laughs> that movie apart. So. Really? Oh, Man, we gotta me, have me and back you disagree and on, on, on this. Me and you disagree on like every, I, that's my, I love that far more than The Dark Knight. <sighs> Awful movie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's, it's logically. That's, that's a pro-capitalist movie. I just, I, <laughs> I love that. I okay, I'll, we can, I'll, we'll we're we're not going to get into it now. No, let's I'm going to two hours I'm, real quick. Do you guys have to be anywhere? <laughs> Mary, Mary, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at Mary Archived. And whenever I post articles on TimCast.com, I promote them there. All right. Well, about the Dark Knight and about Batman Begins. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> guys, you can follow me on Instagram at Brett Dasick for the show. We are here Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. Not normally three hours long, but today is a, today is a special case. A special needs Spe- day. It, today mm-hmm. is a special needs mm-hmm. day. Uh, if you would rather listen rather than watch, we're on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify. Uh, if you guys now, I want to let everyone know, please be uh, share the episodes with your friends. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, if you're getting notifications, let us know. I've been... Uh, or if mess- you're not, let yeah, us know, if you're I not, guess. If you're not, let us know, because I'm kind of uh, messing with our release date and update uh, and upload times because a lot of people are saying they're not getting notifications. So let us know. That would help greatly. Uh, we are also on social media. We're on Twitter, at popculture underscore show, Facebook and TikTok, at popculturecrisis, and on Instagram, at popculturecrisispod. We will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. Bye. See you.